Sharon, just for the minutes, Sharon is not available tonight. Here's a copy of Beaver Best Management Practices. And you got one, I have one, one for Rose. And I'll do it right under the Sharon's papers. We have company. How are you, Doug? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Good. Hi, Joe. Um, all right. Orders are being passed around. So, do you know everybody, Doug? I'm sorry? Do you know everybody? I don't think so. I know John. You know me. I'm Cliff yeah. Emmons, select board. Cliff. And Rose Pelcher. Rose, Mr. Beecher. I'm Key, I'm the recording secretary. Key, And nice Sue, is, Sue is filling in for Jerome from Orca. All right. You want to give us a quick update on the motor, or do you want to do Doug first? Uh, the motor might take a little bit. No. Okay. That's let's, not all bad, but it's just going to take yeah. a Okay. So let's do bids. We have bid for, this is Jack Hill Road, right, project? Yes. And I think um, the bids are scanned in, I think. Okay. okay we have one from... Oh, Bowen. I feel like I'm at the Oscars. One from Gravel. Gravel, Gravel Construction. Construction. And one from Memorial. So, so we can put it into the record. Um, the bid from Bowen was a total of $44,054.22. Right, but the total, I'm looking at, is that the, not the total? No, the very total is 52. Where is that? Oh, okay. It's two parts. I'm looking at right on the, in the direction of the culvert. Okay. Should be on the last page last it says page. it says total forty four oh five four twenty two. Right, that's the total for the for the excavating and installing the collar. But then there's another the eight thousand? Eight thousand is for putting the collar together. Oh okay. I thought the total would be everything. It doesn't it say that the total includes the assembly? Because I thought there's a line item says. on it. The Gravel one says, including assembly total, 40397 Yeah. Like the second from the last line up on that graph sheet includes that other, the top number. So if you scroll down. It was very clear. Yep. See the, um, the, like, 397 Yeah, assembly of the structure, you see, it's included in that. That's gravel, gravel. Gravel, that's the one you have yeah. in your hand. Yeah. So the total is? For gravel. There was, there was three different slots for, for separate prices. Let's go back one up. One for spent assembly and one for installation. Well, one is said, but it is in bracket and says including assembly. Right. Underneath we, the Right. So that's the total. No, see if you look here, it says 40397 Including total bid assembly. price including, including assembly. Yeah. So is that the is that That's the total, total price? This is the total, right? No, this is their price for putting it together. Right. This is their price for putting it in the ground. And including assembly. They're saying everything that is included in that. Can you go down to that yeah, last and page? Scroll down. Mm -hmm. And then see their offer. It says. No, I can see it right here. Yeah, but on but on this thing too, it says. It's on your next page on that one. See where it says assembly of new structure thirty five hundred. So they include it in the total. So they yeah. included it in the total. Yeah. The forty three ninety seven. Yeah. yeah, second line from. The yeah. bottom. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. There's two different bits. I don't know why they would include include all of them together. There's two the, different. The assembly was broken out so you could compare it to what Contech would charge for assembly. 
and then the board could decide but based on that and, and other considerations who they wanted to put it together. But the bottom line price includes it's the assembly. Totally. And That's right. They're listed as included. See, it's the assembly of new structure. Yeah, so that's on Gravel. What's it look like on Bowen's? Bowen's. That's Can you go to Bowen's? So the gravel's going to be even cheaper than you see included that. Yes, that's the way I'm reading it. Is that right? No, I thought, I thought the other one. Okay, so if you go to Bowen's, Bowen's the most expensive. Bowen's didn't include that. Bowen's, yeah, they did. They did, including the assembly. Yeah, so if you go to the last page of Bowen's, so eight thousand eight for the assembly and, and forty four for the total oh, fifty four. If you go to the last the page, yep. it's the second line from the yeah, yep. and it shows eight you eight assembly is eight thousand. Yep. Okay, so what did So Bowen's bottom line is Moyle do. What did Moyle do on there? Forty um, four or something. So Bowen was forty four oh fifty four twenty two. Mm -hmm. And Lamoille is the bottom line is thirty nine nine forty two. But did they include the Yeah. Yeah. So everybody did the same. It's the that's the bottom line that Right. 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 So it's thirty nine, forty, and forty four. Yeah. Pretty so they're all pretty close. Right, they're pretty close. Well, would anybody have any experience with yeah, what's Other than Bowen, we know we've had Bowen do work before here. Yeah. Bowen looks like it's not mine. Yeah. It goes with this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, I've had experience with uh, with Bowen. Yeah. Uh, I've not had experience with gravel. They've bid on a couple of projects for us, and they weren't chosen. They were what? Were not chosen. Oh, okay. They were. They're out of hardware. They were low bid once before. We'll get it. With their, yeah, yeah we'll get it. Yeah, yeah um, we'll get it. Lamoille did the box culvert for us in the North Callus. Uh, the wall, that? that was that. the wall is. The, oh, the wall the box is. Culvert. They did a nice job. They didn't job. do the wall. They did the box culvert mm -hmm. two years before that. They yeah. did a good job, right? Saying that right? Yeah, they did the box culvert. Yeah, the box culvert. Yeah. Right. And uh, then recently, uh, Grandfield did, right. did the wall. Did the wall. Did the wall. Yeah. With uh, gender. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they did everything to spec the outcome of that box mm -hmm. culvert job was what we wanted. Job well done. Yes. If it's any <coughs> use, they bid on a project for uh, Cabot last year, and uh, or were actually the low bidder. The town asked me to check references on them, and they had done some work on for the state, and that was listed, that project in uh, North Dallas. They'd also done uh, some work on repairing dams and things like that, mm -hmm. and um, people said they did great work and they would have them back. And, um, so Gravette Memorial was the 39.942. So Gravel's the middle bidder. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they're the... Yeah, gravel is the forty three ninety seven. Right. And have you had any experience with them, Doug? Yes, they're a great company. Yeah. Um, they they did the job in Cabot last year. They've done a couple. Uh, they're doing one for East Montpelier. It hasn't started yet, but but uh, bid on that. Uh, they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, Dan Gravel's the president. He's got a twin brother, Dean that is on the job, runs the equipment, runs the job. Mm -hmm. um, Family business. Good, like good uh, people. All family businesses. Yeah. Person, right? Sounds like it. All family businesses, each one of them? Um, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Toby, you have any thoughts? Um, they all seem like good, good contractors, uh, probably. I mean, there's a $500 difference in the first and the second. And there's a more than a couple thousand dollar difference between mm -hmm. the, the last. Memorial and the uh, Right, yeah. so I would say you would sort of highlight Memorial or Gravel. 
which Alfred? whatever your pleasure is. I would recommend Gravel. You would. I, I would like to open the door with that company because they are close. Mm -hmm. And if we are in a bind or we are in need of somebody, then I'm certain that they would be there for us. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, I would like to choose. And they were, and you, you worked with them on that North Callis. Right? No, that was the one. The one. Okay. That was the one that did that. But I have worked with. I've seen their work. I've seen mm -hmm. they've done some work in Woodbury, a couple different jobs. They've done one in Cabot, um, and I've looked at that. It's 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 what it's supposed to be. So mm -hmm. I just I just want to would like to give them uh, a chance here, um, given the fact that years ago they were low bidders, and we chose Gene Mellon because Gene was local and. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember the figures, I don't know the difference in the bids, but um, I would like to try to heal that with gravels. Mm -hmm. And for a $500 difference, I think that that's... Well, I mean, your recommendation is important, so... Yeah. yeah. Sounds good to me. Good. Would somebody like to make a motion? To ex okay, I'll make a motion. I make a motion that we um, use gravel for the construction of we accept the bid accept gravel. the bid right here um, for the replacement of the existing structure on town highway number 33 which is Hill Road and it's grant number BC1851 is there a second second did there's a second say, and a third over there. Yeah, did you say in the amount of? Oh, no, in the amount of 40,397. Okay. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Yes. All right. So. What's the time frame on this, Alfred? Uh, it's a very short time frame, actually, uh, as far as the taking goes. Uh, it's going to start. Can't, your new road can't be closed before July 9th. July 9th. July 9th. That's when we're going to close the road. They'll have two weeks to do their installation. Mm -hmm. And then I allowed myself a week to do both my part, which is at the top surface gravel and the guardrails. Okay, so it's going to be, is it going to be, that whole intersection going to be closed? The or? whole Jack Hill will be closed. Except, so you can be on the Jack Hill the other end. Left. So from Mary Alice's back towards Beacon Road. Okay, so you can still closed. go down Moscow Woods Road then? Mm -hmm. yep. Oh yeah, Moscow yeah. Woods won't yeah. be harmed at all. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. I want to put something on um, front porch. I want something. No. Um, I guess, do we need to sign this or something? I don't see. Can you so, sign uh, this? Yeah, we do a contract. That's just a bid. So we, okay. So we have them drop a contract and we sign it. And do you notify the others? Yeah, I can give them a call and tell them the results. Okay. All right, so let the minutes reflect that Al. Who? Hopefully they don't shake their fist at me too bad. Well, you know, it is. Who is this? Anybody. The, the other two bidders, when I call them and tell them that we've chose one and it's not that. It was really tight. I mean, they were all excellent bids, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. They're all pretty we're close. Too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So do you keep these or do we keep them in the office? Do you know? We keep them in the office. Keep them in the office. Okay. All right. We can do that. Um, so while we're on that subject, we should probably have a discussion about the guardrail that you have. Um, yes, that's on the agenda. Up. Yep. Well, it's probably a good timing while Doug is here to talk about guardrail for us. Yes. So we can't. We prefer to go with the non-shiny. Um, ungalvanized. Ungalvanized. And I think it's called a rusty core 10 or something. Core 10. Core 10. 
Did you get figure yeah. out the price? I got a price. And this is for the Jack Hill Road project. Correct. Just for the record. Is that the price per section you have or? It's price per foot. Per foot. Is how I broke it down. Okay. Uh, so it's fifteen dollars and thirty four cents per foot installed. 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 So that's them coming over there, hammer mm -hmm. and pounding the posts and put the rail on. So what's the total? So what, what, I'm confused. Who's, who's putting the guardrail on? We hire com a company. A separate company. To separate do that? company. Really? Yeah. Because huh. we don't have the equipment. We don't have a post hammer. We don't have any of that to do. Okay. And with two, was it 208 feet? It'd be a long time pounding that with the excavator. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering. I didn't, I didn't know that. They get it. They got it straight. They got it. You know. They've got. And who was that company? Uh, usually we use Vermont Recreational. Hmm. They're out of Monroe, New Hampshire. Huh. Only it's called Vermont Recreational. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what's the total price on that outfit then for 280 feet, you said? Is, is, are you going to reset what's there? I mean, are you going to change that to be more? Well, we have to if we're, yeah. we don't want to mix core 10. No, with, no. no. With, Rail is there. So it's it's three hundred and eighty seven and a half feet total. You get it. Three hundred eighty seven. You got a calculator on the computer. So I I had a quote draw up for me uh, using four hundred million feet. There you go. So that total is sixty one thirty seven. Six thousand one hundred and thirty seven dollars. And that's complete. Now we can't take and put the state won't um, state approve, won't pay, pay for this at all. They won't even give you like what it would, what they would give you for the other stuff, and then you could deduct it from this. No, it's absolutely ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Well, they don't meet their standards. I know, but it's, it's right. They're applying once again, you know, a, a class two road, road interstate type road standard to a back road guardrail. Are you figuring something? Yeah. Fifty-four, eighty-four. Fifty-four, eighty-four. Or do you have to buy the full, like in so many pieces? No, it's how many feet. How so many if feet? it's three eighty-seven instead of four hundred, it would be the math of three eighty-seven instead of four hundred. Okay. The, num the number Alfred gave you is six thousand. It's based on four hundred feet. Right. Four hundred feet. Okay. So give or take whatever it actually turns out to be will be. Yeah, I mean, there's not all that much about five hundred dollars difference. Okay. So that's core ten. Mm -hmm. Gave you the prices last meeting of the other. And the other stuff would be covered. Wooden rail. The wooden rail is even more expensive. Right? Like the wooden rail is ridiculous money. It's, yeah. it's at least a hundred bucks a foot. Wow. Ridiculous. And the other stuff is. Wow. Well, the other stuff would have well, been covered the other, by the. The other rail. option is used galvanized rail. So it wouldn't be the real shiny, it's, it's already dulled down, it's already mm -hmm. weathered. Yeah. Oxidized. Right. And, the, and the, the advantage of that is it's already galvanized steel as opposed to raw steel, and it will last longer. It, you know, it looks like it's been there forever, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have that quote-unquote rustic feel, if that's what you're trying to achieve with the, I, with the I core would, 10. I would conjecture that that core 10 will outlast my children's lives. Lives cool. on a back road. Yeah, probably. So uh, I think that's no, it's fine. Right. It's just you know. You know. But um, so we went I looked that I was up there and looked at the trees, thing um, and, and looked and really took a look at that galvanized, and that's the old galvanized. It's already it looks. It, I think it looks horrendous. <laughs> so um, well, our standards, our road standards, suggest that we use this kind of um, guardrail. So we can't afford the wooden one, but. All right, so do we want, am I hearing that we want to go with this core 10? Is, is this, yep. um, so is that AOT standard, is that actually policy or is it actually written down in a regulation? Where does that come from? That the requirement that if we, they'll only fund the galvanized. So if they were finding that the, the core 10, the weathering steel guardrail wasn't lasting. 
right you, on, on salted roads um, it's they weren't they weren't going to use it anymore on on any state roads right salted or not and some of them are are some of them are um, whether it had state money or federal money or both in it and it, it, they were reluctant to to have towns use it because of the state in the course of a town highway structures grant project reimbursing the town for 90 percent of the cost and yet having something that's not going to to last um, salt being the, the flexible factor in there you know on some of it you know it's they're just trying to get away from it yeah. Now there are. Uh, but but my question was, do you know whether they have a, a regulation or if, if it do they have discretion? Did someone write a policy memo from up high? We're not accepting this anymore, or was this did this go through rulemaking and they have a regulation that applies <coughs> standards? <coughs> and the reason I'm asking is because if it's not in a regulation, then they have that flexibility and discretion, and it's a policy call by whoever's in charge, like way up the chain. I think it's more they just don't want to fund it. They don't, they right. don't approve it as, as safe, right? But so they don't want to fund it through a state grant. I understand that, but I'm, I'm not wondering. saying you can't use it if you pay No, no, but I'm, I'm wondering in terms of their funding, do they, is this actually a discretionary thing that they're just holding a line on, or is this something that they would have to go back through rulemaking and write through regulations to do? So yeah, I think you're asking That's my Doug, question. right? I guess I'm asking Doug, I think yeah. you're more familiar yeah. with that process. I don't know how the decision was was derived, and if there is a, in a, a policy in effect that that says that you will not use that. Now, is, is there's some up through 108 in, in the notch, okay? That doesn't get salted in the winter. That's closed. All right. Uh, there's some up on 125 through Ripton up there through part of the National Forest. Does that predate the, the policy? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely. Older. Okay. Yeah, that, and that's why. Yeah. Uh, if that was to be changed now, mm -hmm. I don't think it would be grandfathered in, mm -hmm. really. You know? Yeah. So those are the options, right? Wouldn't you this core 10? The used guardrail or the shiny galvanized stuff, those are the four options, right? Is that it? Yeah. All right, so am I hearing that we want to go with the uh, core 10? And that would have to come out of our highway budget, right? Yeah. Next year's we looked at a uh, company, Lafayette Highway Specialties. <coughs> same, same type. Yes. I wonder if their prices are the same or better or worse. We can. They seem to offer a, a whole, whole array of options. I'm just wondering what the prices. We can, we can price it out and see. Yeah, we can tell the experience of the other company. Yeah, I'm just curious. I can, I can give them the same lineal footage <coughs> and see what they'll, what they'll do for, for a price we're talking yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I think, I think we're, what we're saying is we want to go with uh, Core 10. Core 10. Um, we've only got three thousand dollars budgeted for guardrails in next year's budget because this is going to come out of FY19. So with with well, we can run that we run that budget line over. We'll have other yeah. budget lines. Yeah. Right. I'm just saying that maybe next year we want to we're going to have projects and we're going to use that. We might want to think about. I think we should also maybe have a, invite AOT down here to explain this to us. Invite to us. Well, who at AOT would be, if I was going to contact somebody at AOT, who about this? Who would the policy? You know, yeah, you, who would we talk to? Portalupe. Uh, well, you, Alec, Alec Portalupe. Yeah, Alec Portalupe or Wayne Simmons. Wayne took uh, he took Rich Tatro's place after Kevin. Uh, Ken Roby. So Alec, maybe we'll start with Alec. Yeah. yeah and see what we yeah. Can. It was an email that um, I saw from Shauna Clifford, and from District Seven, 
that mentioned Alec. Alec had given her the information about guardrails. Yeah. So that's a good place to start. It is Alec. Okay. All right. Are we all are we good with that? We know what we want. We've got the bids done. Okay. So John wants me to get another price. Do I? I mean, we got time. Right. Hey, if you can't, if you don't have to run out of time, don't worry about it. But no, I just, just I'm, I'm wondering, do I wait till the next meeting no. for you guys to make that decision? No, 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 no. we're going to go with no. the core 10. No, 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 I know the core 10, but no, you, Lafayette can do it cheaper or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's just a management. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's just, your that's call. You. Yeah, that's our call. Okay. And if it's nickels and dimes and you're more comfortable with the other guys, right. the higher price right. to go with that, that's your call. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Anything else that we need to hold up, Doug? Do you want to hear about truck motors? Do you want to hear about truck motors? I heard a little bit about it before. Probably all I needed to hear. And then some, right? I mean, I think the minutes can just reflect that we are definitely want to go with Core 10, and Alfred's going to get another, you know, take another look at another vendor and make a decision on which one to use. It's up to you. Okay. Okay. Um, and and schedule when I was saying when when they could get to it. Right. You know. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Doug. You're welcome. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Thanks. Your summer gone, Doug. Good. Yeah. Wow. So far, so good. Yeah, so <laughs> this yeah. is a busy time of year, right? It is. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. But He's still recovering good. from his black fly bites <laughs> from the uh, site visit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no, I don't bad. blame you. Those not, are not they're vicious. Well, you're doing better than the moose are, I'm sure. <laughs> With all the tips. Okay. Um, Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of grants, let's do municipal roads, grants, and aid program participation. You filled out the, this is the thing through CBRPC. No, you had to sign that letter saying you were interested in, in right. participating. That's all that it required. Okay, but it, but that was a letter that CBRPC did, right? No, it was sent to the town, and the town yeah. just needed, you, the town needed to say, yeah. yes, we are interested, and I believe and I, you I did send it. a letter right. to them, so that's taken but care I, of that. For some reason, I thought it was through. It is through CBRPC. Okay, that's what I thought. And this is for... Um, it's for just regular work on the roadside, identifying segments that have berm removal that needs or crown adjustments. So right. it's our has, normal work, but they're going to reimburse us as we do the work. Right, and, the, and this has to do with what CVRPC did, that inventory? It, it has to do with the inventory that we've done that identified all these areas where right. there's problems. Right, high risk. Okay. I just and want to make sure not, my brain was doing it right. It's not site-specific. It's just in general. For any right. Right spot okay. downtown that right. That so in the first round, we essentially highlighted Peak and Brook and did the whole length of Peak and Brook. Mm -hmm. And that was roughly $15,000 worth of reimbursement. This second round will identify other places where it makes sense to do a couple of roads in, in their entirety so that we um, you know, essentially focus and get all of our money back out of that. Okay. So. Gotcha. So it's, it's kind of an ongoing. Well, it's what it is is they're trying to subsidize the work that they want us to be doing, and if they give us money, then we're more apt to do it. You think? So, <laughs> we are. You know, last year they gave us twelve thousand five hundred. This year they're giving us fifteen thousand plus. Mm -hmm. And there's a match. So, but we're doing the work anyways. It's just we get reimbursed for it. Nice. Very nice. So that's in place since you sent your interested letter. Okay. Got it in in time. Don't leave the money on the table. No, I won't do that. All right. Um, 
Thank you for sending me that list, Toby. Yeah. Um, so while we're talking about money, I uh, don't want to change the subject, but this well, is... Well, can I want to... Is this got the... This was... Maybe we could sit down and talk about when these are going to happen, and I can put something on the front porch for them. So the only problem with... We don't have any idea timing-wise. I can't tell you that I'm going to do one in June and one in August and one in September. We sort of have that list and we work depending on the weather and people mm -hmm. on vacation. And so essentially the list of projects are there, but there's really no time frame that we've ever put into those projects. Other, other than a specific mm -hmm. um, grant project that has a timeline requirement. So I'm wondering how the best way to do this, because I've gotten some requests that we do what Woodbury does, which is a weekly posting. And that could turn into a lot of work and not be very helpful. It might cause more problems than it solves. So I'm wondering, like for this Jack Hill Road one, I can put something on front porch for him now. So when you're getting ready to do a project, could you like let me know? I mean, we're we meet often enough. Um, so that I can just post something. Well, I can tell you from working with Alfie that sometimes he doesn't decide until 7.30 in the morning which way he's headed out down the road to which project. So, you know, giving you a week's, a week's notice on what's in, in the project list mm -hmm. can change overnight with weather and broken equipment and yeah. repairs yeah, and stuff. So it's really, it's really hard for me to do any kind of, you know, it's just not the way the highway department mm -hmm. works as far as planning goes. Um, we keep a list of things we want to do and we keep checking which them off. Which is what this is. Which is exactly yeah. what you have in your hand. But the timing is irregular and I don't want to be committed to that I will be on um, right. no, I Old that. West Church on August 15th and if we aren't there people are going to wonder why aren't we and then... Well that's what I'm trying to avoid by doing a weekly thing because I think that could turn into a mess. Well, again, being predictable about what the next project is really is a day-to-day -day decision. Well, like, for instance, the bigger ones, though, the grants, like the Jack Hill thing, the Loose Road, do when, you have any... When we, essentially, when is we... That, do, is that easier to have some kind of a time frame for? Well, we know Jack Hill. Right. Right. We know the date for that. Well, right. the light, Loose Road and Bliss Road, essentially, it's a project in one place where we will camp out for, for three or four days or however long it takes. So but, we could give you a somewhat okay. advance notice of those on a, All right, that's reasonable. on a shot. But if we're ditching on uh, West County Road, mm -hmm. it's going to be a, a hit or miss decision when that happens. OK, and like when you're doing culvert work replacement, is that something that you plan ahead? Uh, you have to have usually only a day or two ahead, so yeah, we can only yeah. give you a day's notice. Well, that's all right. I can. And we would only, you know, we would only really deal with trying to announce culvert replacement if it's really going to close the road for a longer period of time. For mm -hmm. particularly if it's a if it's a high traffic road, we would then. I mean, I would post something on front porch for him saying, take as I've had in the right, past. Right. Right. Take alternate routes because for a day we're going to close mm -hmm. the road. Okay. And. I will continue to do that as you know as the projects um, line up. Yeah, but only if they inconvenience the traveling public or they have to take a different route. Okay, so then I'll post something about just kind of summer projects mm -hmm. on Front Porch Forum and let folks know about the Jack Hill project when that's going to be. And if you can, you know if you can give me some notice about these other bigger projects. Right. Well, town town hall is middle of August. Right. Yeah. Right, that's mid-August. Um, and did Reed Schneck talk to you about the Hayden Bridge, about the... Mm -hmm. Yep, she did. The guardrails? Well, they visited that, her. Yep. Okay, so we're going to do steel-backed wooden ones? Well, that was the intention, I think, of the select board. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think you just put up temporary ones or something, didn't you? Or, did. Am I remembering right? Yeah. We put up Core 10 because we had it in stock. Mm -hmm. All right. So she doesn't like the core 10. I, I went by, but they look pretty good. Yeah, I thought it looked fine. But I guess she's going on what she was told. She's going by what Tammy Lino, Lino has been telling her. Because Tammy Lino contacted me. Oh, she did? About that, about the rail. Mm -hmm. How and she confused the daylights out of me at first because she was talking about the wooden bridge. To my knowledge, Callus does not have a wooden bridge in it. <laughs> So I, I was so. very confused about yeah, it, a few so I, years. I had to call her back and really get a down, quiz yeah. her to f what she was talking about. So then when I finally got it out of her that she was interested in the, the wooden rail. 
on that bridge. And, and why that hasn't been changed yet. That's yeah. What, what well, I ran, I ran into Reed at the co-op, and she asked me about it. And I told her to <coughs> talk to you guys. And as I understand it, as if you go back through the minutes, there was some discussion with the local residents about changing it to wooden in the right. future, and I think you guys agreed with that. So yeah. We I just need to make sure that that's your intent. Yeah, whatever the minutes, uh, yeah. I mean, if you've gone back and looked at the minutes, that's... Well, what I haven't, we but did. I, that's, how, that's what I remember. That's yeah. what I remember, too. Right, and that's what we And we temporarily put too. the used stuff, but I thought it looked pretty good, the used stuff. <laughs> but if we do that, Doug, I uh, just sat here, asked us to write a disclaimer because those rails do not stand up to crash. They're not certified for... For a bridge. I thought we were putting uh, the certified steel rail and we were just putting a wood face on it. Oh, no, that's impossible. No, it's there's two different rails. It's it's wooden rail or it's core tent. Okay, I thought there was a there was a steel box rail that put wood over the front. No? No, it's two different rails. Okay. We, gotta, we gotta change the posts, we gotta change and the spacing isn't isn't all that great for, for the bridge. It's yeah. a 16 foot bridge, and you've got to somehow mount those to the post, the steel posts that we've got on the bridge. Could we have another public meeting on that, Madam Chair? Yeah. And discuss Let's, these concerns with them. And I mean, it's maybe we can meet the public doable, out there. But it's going to be a challenge to, right. to, to change it because it's total different. I mean, they, the spacing, the, the mm -hmm. post spacing is different. I can put this the on the next. I can put this on a, the next select board meeting. But if we could maybe do a meeting out there at six thirty, is that possible? And everyone we, well, can view that what their the current next, rail looks like. Next meeting we're starting at six. The school board. Well, the meeting after. So we can move the yeah. So we can the meeting of seven. Second meeting in July. Um, twenty three. Maybe we want to do a site visit out there, and then maybe we we can all come to an agreement. Does that work? Sounds really good. <laughs> I have a question. Like, I, I might have missed the very beginning of that conversation because I was reading the, the road work schedule. So, am I getting this right that somebody didn't like the way the core ten looks on the new North Callis Bridge? Is that what the That's beginning? Correct. So maybe one or two people don't like the way right, it looks. Right. It has to do. It's it the core ten was too. put there temporarily because we had already committed to putting wood. We're trying to keep that okay. historic Commitment. village looking historic. And we committed when we were going to do the project because remember there was a lot of controversy even about just replacing the bridge. Right. And one of the concessions or agreements was that we would put up the wooden rails. But I think. But you, maybe. Now, are the wooden rails certified for crash for a bridge? No. no. So I think that's an insurance issue we need to bring up. It's an insurance issue, and it's also a disclaimer releasing Doug, the engineer that designed uh -huh. this, of responsibility. Are you getting this for the minutes? Yeah. So that I can. Yeah, I just. I don't know. Well, what let's go out and take a look at it. Say what yeah. you say. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I just. I almost think like. It's really getting really nitpicky. Like, I don't like the way those guardrails look. You know, let's change this. I, I don't like this. I don't like that. And it's like, you know, one or two people. Mm -hmm. well, it, is way, his, I, it is a historic yeah. village. That, yeah. you know, it is it's different it's than, designated you know, as a historic down the road district. from my house. Yeah. It's different, you know. It is designated as a historic it's district. It's a tiny yeah. little bridge. Well, I don't think we need to have a public hearing. No, I think no, we do a site visit. Yeah, we do a site visit, like six thirty. Site visit. Okay. I'm just trying well, to get a rose out, out there in the field. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I don't get out much. Six <laughs> fifteen. We'll do it at six fifteen, so that we have time to get back here okay. for seven. Okay. On the twenty third. Yeah. And we will let the residents know. Post it on front porch forum. And. Um, and also keep in mind that. We only got three thousand dollars in our budget for guardrails. And we just spent it. We just spent We're more spending, of our budget right. on, on these core tent. And so another project is going to be, be over. At least it's going to be 
least it's probably going to be that again, the $6,000 yeah. well, again it's, or it's, more. If, you know, then we have options, we could do it next year if we decide to do it. Um, and uh, But I just think it's worthy to go out there for everyone to eyeball the core tent, too. Yeah. yeah. And, and did, see what it looks like in that install. And when we're doing budgets, we know we're going to be using core 10, so maybe we want to think about, you know, if, we, if you know you have four or five projects that we're going to use that on, we want to make sure we put money in the budget for that. And the price per foot for the wood was 100 bucks versus, a foot? Versus 15. So versus, versus 15. Versus 15. So, that's, that's that definitely. So it's $100 per foot. Yeah. How many Which, feet would be on that one? On the bridge? Uh, hundred feet. I think it's forty on each side. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah, I think it's forty right. to fifty on each side, so yeah, hundred feet. So we need a hundred feet. Yeah. And the same company install that. That's ten grand. Ten grand. Yeah. Ten grand for that much. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot. And the rail that we put there is deemed almost use useless because mm -hmm. it's you know, it's such short stretches. I don't know right. if you could put it somewhere else and, right. and get that value out of it. Yeah, right. So it's going to sit over back of the shop somewhere. And right. Mm -hmm. Dirt put right. on it and banged up. And yeah, history is expensive. Right. Okay, so I think I think it makes sense to do that and just go out and talk well, about yeah, it. Yeah, maybe we can persuade them into into leaving it the way it is. Yeah. For a month. year or two, would they could grow vines yeah. on it and yeah. pretty it up that way, or yeah, you know. Well, I think already, I think it's we, already healed a lot from right. what from right when it was ugly and dirty yeah. and whatnot. And they didn't the all green. It's, yeah, it's all it's great. Color. I think it looks. Great. I think it looks really good. I was over it the other day. So, I think I think what, what, what we're getting at. We can persuade them. Right. Into well, I think it is. I think because we had the public meeting and it was there was a huge outpouring of people, I think we owe it to them, out of respect and what we promised to meet with them. And not just ignore. Right, and allow them to understand exactly the extra cost, the, the fact so, that it's that it's not suitable for a crash on a bridge. Uh, let them kind of understand what we're facing. Right. And maybe they'll agree. So what, why couldn't I'm not saying we should do this, but this is just speculating. Why couldn't we drill the guardrail that's there and just not the corners, but the straightaway, straight pieces? Why couldn't we drill and bolt? Two by ten PT all in the face, and then nail two by eight PT on the top, and then they could put flower boxes on top, and and it would essentially hide the guardrail. And could you do that? And it would be cheap. Um, well, that would be cheap. I mean, you're you're start you're starting to shrink up, shrink your distance, your your lane space. Travel portion. An inch and a half. Inch and a half. Oh, so that's, that's, that's three inches. Oh yeah. come on, guys. Well, I. <laughs> Look, I shouldn't be laughing. It just, I don't know if that's going to be pretty. You put pressure treated on there, people don't like pressure treated. It's a chemical. People don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. that's another thing that. But the wood guardrails would be that. Wood guardrails are pressure treated. Yeah. That's right. Well, and that's something I think we should tell them that the wooden ones are pressure treated and it's right there by the river. Whatever. So, all right. So let's just let's just let's just right. Let's just go meet with them. Um. All right. Let's talk. Okay. Uh oh. One quick thing. Let's talk money. Trust's all about money, isn't it? This is the reimbursement form for the Hayden Bridge, which we were just talking about. I need you guys to sign it so we can get reimbursed. Yeah, we already approved this, so this is just getting reimbursed. I don't think. We yeah, so if you all sign it. Yeah, I don't think we need a motion for this, do you? Nope, you just need to sign it and give it back to me so I can get it to Shauna. And then you can talk truck. Okay, let's talk truck. I get more educated every time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, well, yeah, just come up to the table. So I finally got a very nice and fancy packet of stuff from j and today Ooh. with a whole bunch of information. Now j and that's the ones that you usually J&B is who, I, who we bought all of our trucks from. Okay. And they've got our broken truck at their shop. So I have three prices for trucks here, three different trucks. Two being International, one being Western Star. 
And you didn't want Western Star again, right? No, we want yeah. Western Star. Western Star. Western Star. Western Star. The internationals. The Pro. two internationals, there's two different choices being the motor, the two different models. Mm -hmm. One of them will accept a uh, Cummings motor, which we've had good luck with. The other one is only international motor, which I'm afraid of. That would be um, so are these new trucks? These are brand new trucks. Okay. So maybe I should back up. I don't know where we're. Well, I think so. We so we decided we asked you to look into getting lease to purchase option. I've got that. Okay. Yep. Because if we buy a truck, I think we have to have a special town meeting. Right. Well, another problem that we face, no matter if we lease or buy, they don't come. They, a truck won't be here until September. That's the earliest. It's yeah. pretty good at this point. But at least you have it for the winter. No, that's that's the cabin chassis, and then it's another two months to get the plowing oh. equipment on. So, oh, so we're cutting it close because we're going to have snow in November. Right. Right. But we get we have the backup truck. The backup truck is. Is busted and sitting up in Colchester right now. No. Well, well running one, of our, one of our trucks is, the is truck. down. So we're running we don't the backup back truck. truck now. Right, we're running the backup truck. We are, we're running. Oh, okay. I thought you meant the backup the truck, truck was also broken down. No, no, no. Right now we've only got one truck broke down. Okay. <laughs> right. Not to say we haven't had other trucks break down. And, you right. know, the one ton's been down at Walker Fords for a couple weeks now. So. Oh, wow. Uh, so anyway, maybe we want to talk about the repair. Yeah, I want to hear that first. Uh, yeah. So the repair of the new truck, um, of the, the, of old, the old truck, truck. The, one that's at the brand new motor is going to cost us $29,297. $29,297. And that's to repair the motor for that's the That's a brand system. new motor <coughs> installed. Long block. Oh, that's installed? Installed price. And that includes removal of the old motor? That's yes. That's our truck going down the road again. Okay. Yeah. So that's the total cost. But yeah. that's the same kind of motor that was in it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's the There's only option. No right. Because you can't put a Cummings for that in truck. For that. That's the only option. Yeah, I told you. I was that motor. Right. You can't put a Cummings in. <laughs> no, you can't. Um, so with that price, uh, J and B has given us the motor at cost. They're not making a nickel on it. So he says. I have to believe them. I don't yeah. know why. Right. Know. We've done a lot of business. So a brand new motor in that truck running, going down the road, is 39000 At least it's 29000 29, 29, 29, 29, sorry. Okay. And they would pay us fifty on trade. Yes. Yeah. So, so, we would, so we would... Well, he's changed oh, yeah. it. It's down to forty seven now. Okay. Because oh, he's yeah. figuring... It's right it, up here, John. He's figuring it would be, be another year older by the time the deal went down. So he took four okay. grand off. But. So the trade would be forty-seven k. So by putting that motor in, we'd be making about eighteen thousand dollars mm -hmm. profit. And if we didn't put the motor in, we were only going to get eight thousand. Eighty-five hundred. Eighty-five hundred. So sounds like a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Well, hold on. There's more information coming. All right, well, all right, all right. Yeah. Based, based on that little bit of information. Okay. Right. 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 So, so JMB has a used motor, and he said it was around the same amount of miles that our truck has on. <laughs> he originally told me today hit this this quote. He quoted me fifteen eight seventy five. Installed. Installed, running, going down the road again. Okay. I told him he's got to do better than that. When he left, I said, that's not going to work. You need to do better. It's not my fault that this truck is broke. It's not my fault that there's the core is no good because they're charging us four grand for the core because it's a bad motor. Because it threw a rod. Because it threw a rod. Okay. So he emailed me back with a price that is much better than that. It was like 13 So he, oh, that's not really good. And this is the it's 13 motor. something. Um, so roughly 13k. Yeah, for the running truck with a with a second-hand motor. Okay. And would we still get the same 
No. The amount of trade? No. Is that no. It's no. It would be less. Okay. Yeah, 35 is what they told us back then. But if you take the same approach that it's going to be a year older, then you probably not quite another $4,000. Oh, so it takes you down to say 31. Mm -hmm. It's what's 13? 16. It's, it's 16 to, or 18. For so trade in terms of the, the return on investment. We fixed <laughs> the old motor in versus new motor. We, we get a better return on the investment, mm -hmm. putting a new motor in. Right. And so it's not like we lose by putting a new motor, we get more money back. But here's another wrinkle. <laughs> uh, There's not a, a new motor available. You would have to. You would. We have to do a uh, what do they call down truck critical, which is a rush thing. Rush thing. You send them the specs. They make. A, they build the motor for us. Oh. And then they're gonna charge this, us. This used one. I can have that truck running in two weeks. And then we can get the trade in right away. Okay. Well, if if we go that far, yeah. if we go that avenue. I mean, right. the thing that I'm looking at is winter is about to. to no, no, we're not bringing that back. No, and well, what are we going to do? We're not going to even if we decide to buy a truck tonight. We're not going to have a truck until January. If we put a used motor in and that we bring that thing back, we put five miles on it and it blows another motor. We're right back where we started. It's got the same hours on it as our truck. Well, that's why I, I don't want. think it should leave the yard. Well, that's why I wonder. I mean, this is not like it's a unique thing. No one's ever heard of these things blowing before, right? This is a common place thing. And we know what miles hours blew out. I think it's big risk. Now, now we're risking about eighteen thousand or fourteen thousand, well, fourteen thousand dollars. I don't think it's worth. It. I think we we limp along with it. That's most highway farmers don't have a backup truck, is my understanding. We do. And I think we just that's a lesser risk than bringing this thing back and risking fourteen thousand dollars. Well, that's my, why I'm my opinion. It's your phone that's going to ring when I can't. That's, uh, I can't a phone ringing phone. is better than phone phone ringing because it takes longer to open a route. Um, is better than a phone, phone many phones ringing and heads being rolled, or whatever threat threats of heads being rolled are rolled at us. Well, that's why I'm wondering. Mismanage. Can you imagine the publicity? We're at, we're on. As the film rolls, we're on here again. Yet we brought the motor back. We know this thing was. On potentially on his last legs, and it blew after a thousand miles. He's not warrantying this thing, is he? I would use motor. I would know. Yeah. So this is why I'm wondering. But you're also you're also thirteen thousand versus twenty nine thousand. Yeah, we, but then can, we can't get anything for it. Can I say something? Because if you blow the motor, you're not going to get anything. It's way more than thirteen thousand. That's why I'm wondering what our options are with a lease to own so that if we're going to do that you can get it ordered right away yeah well that's what he's saying it's still november it's whether it's lease or it's or it's right but at least we know that we've got this truck ordered and we can limp along maybe using the spare if you say it's september and then it's two months to me that's november not january yeah it's so not, what are our options it's on not heavy demand no well, well, no, the, the slot is open to order the truck in September or October. It would not, the chassis would not be delivered till November, and then there's two months of build time. That's not what he said. That's no. not what Alfred just said. He said we would have the chassis in September, and it's two more months to, to layer on the Well, the maybe plot. that's what J&B promised him. I thought it was later than that. Yeah, it's March. J&B for Western Star is March. To, to get have, it to have all fit up. To have, what? to have the truck, the cabin chassis. That's the problem we're in. We, yeah. I mean, even if we decide to spend the money, we don't have a truck available. Right. It's that much time out. That's is why. There a, is there a used, a different, a Western Star used truck we can buy somewhere? Yeah, that's an idea. Uh, to take the Not place all of this. plowed up. Not without, you know what I mean? It's, no, it's, no, but I want, but then you say it takes like two months to get it off. Retrofit it up, right? But that might be even better if we can find a used one that hasn't been pushing, pushing snow. Then it's, then it's, you know, it's in potentially better shape for the hours. It I may could, be hard to find. Something I could look better. into the truck that he's going to take the, mo the used motor out of. He said he allowed thirty-five thousand for it. That's what he's got into it. But I don't that's, know if that's the same truck as we got. 
I know. No, I'm saying is she these say is a Western Star Trek. Used Western Star Trek. Yeah. My experience, if somebody's got a Western Star, they're keeping it. Yeah. Because it runs. They're not gonna want to get rid of it. But if a company goes it's out there, maybe it's bankrupt. Well. You know, you never know. I don't okay. know how you, I don't know Somebody, how you, can, somebody's just, welcome to do that research. I don't have time. Greg to loves to do that I kind of research. I don't have time he does. to I know, search out a truck. Really busy. No, I mean, I mean, I think this is just a discussion. Right. Is, right. Because right. I think we all have questions. And then once again, you're buying somebody else's product. So the Western Star is there's such a backlog of demand that they can't get the truck till March loaded. Again. Well, their yeah. production is sold out for the year. Wow. So Who they won't, so it would be next year's it's production good. before you would see one. Now yeah, I fun. talked with Charlie Boyce today, and they have one slot left. They have a truck they could get that would cut, that would order in either September or October, and would probably be here by November. But okay. we would have to commit to it pretty quickly. Let's do it. Well, yeah, but we can't just do it. I mean, is that no, a lease, lease? Lease to op, lease to own? Lease purchase. We can do a lease purchase. Correct. Okay, that's. I'm waiting for the numbers on the municipal lease. I mean, do you have any rough idea of how much what? one of those costs? Yeah, the well, truck is 100 and 100 We're not going to get the trade on the other truck if we go to Charlie Boys, right? Because he's going to. That's right. Jane B. You don't want that test. truck. You ain't going to. So if J and, J and B doesn't have one that we could get that's leased to him? Purchase? No, J and B's slot for Western Stars are all used up until next year. Okay. Well, I'm not certain of that. I guess I didn't. I wasn't certain. I wasn't aware of these slots mm -hmm. when I had the conversation with Bill Clary. Mm -hmm. So I, he might have a slot. I don't know. I yeah. don't know that. Do you have his Bill's personal cell phone? Can we call him? Uh, just, just to find that, that question. I have it at the his card. Just, I mean, if we, he could say, yeah, I can get you that truck. It's all I got's the office here on the card. Oh, okay. I do have it at, at the shop. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's a dilemma. It really is. Yeah. I, I understand what you're saying, but... It but just, I mean, I, I need to know what you guys want to do. Are we looking at definitely buying a new truck? Or are we thinking about... I thought we left here saying we're buying a new truck and we're not buying an international and we're buying a Western Star. But we figure have, out how to do it, but we want to maximize our return on, on the broken down truck. That was the conversation we had. And, and I I, that's what I was talking about. And, that's, and I remember we said, let's look at a lease to, lease to purchase because we haven't... Right. We, uh, had a town, that, we haven't had a right town meeting kind of thing for right. buying a new truck, and you know what will happen. Right. We can always lease it, and then if people say they don't want it, we can end the lease. Right. So what other information do you have? I have lease information. Okay. Okay. So he, he figured it. Do you make copies? Figured it on $111,000. Yeah. That's just the truck. How much? Hundred and eleven thousand for the new one, mm -hmm. or and that's truck. just the Western Star. Cabin chassis. That's just the cabin chassis, right? right. That's a Western Star. Yes. Hundred and eleven k. Okay, and then the rest of it. The uh, it's a five. It's a five-year lease. Interest rate is three point nine nine. At the end of the five years, you own the truck. Payments would be sixteen thousand three ninety three. Would that, and then uh, could we at least purchase the plow equipment too? Or mm -hmm. that's can you that, take the equipment off the own. other truck? Will the equipment fit from the? You can, but it doesn't work well. It's used. Well, it's used. It's it's got seven years under its belt. It's oh. rusty. It's rusty. So it's sixteen three ninety three just for the hundred and eleven piece. Payment, yes. And then how much is it for all the other stuff that goes on? Uh, around 70000 total. So that's all the outfitting? Outfitting. That's the body, the plows, the hydraulic pump. 70000 70. I think it was, our last truck was 67. That doesn't really sound that bad to me. So it's $180,000 for a truck. 
not including a extended warranty. And we would definitely want the extended warranty after. Yeah. 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 So how about considering putting an old motor in the truck and then just trying to sell it ourselves instead of trying to trade it? Can that we way we can go somewhere else. Put it on the marketplace, try to sell it for forty or fifty thousand hmm. dollars. So Let's we, think we, we can get so we that. don't have to tie it up in Do you think we can get that? I have no idea. Toby. I mean, Toby's good at selling stuff. Yeah, I know, but we also had a pickup truck some years ago for sale, and we wound up selling it cheap because we couldn't sell it. Well, it's, that's, a, that's a whole other job. You know, uh, Alfie's car and truck sales <laughs> hang back, hang those little you. ribbons out with the, I wear enough hats with the balloons that sales. inflate. And, yeah. Um, so, well, unless Toby's willing to take over trying to sell Or the other thing to do is just fix the other truck and then try to trade that in somewhere else besides J&B. Mm -hmm. Well, the, didn't the, um, what's the other place called? Wait, we're not going to get the deal where it's going to cost more to fix the truck. Right. Mm -hmm. If we don't go with J&B, he's given us a break. That's on, right. Uh, he's given us $75. The tear out of the mo old motor, he's not charging us for it. So all these conversations. That's correct. He's only charging us for the install. Mm -hmm. And he's given us, well, if we're a new motor, he's given us cost, but he has it. He already has a used motor in, in apps, right? Do they have a truck that we could rent while this one at J and B's, while this one is being done? They don't. They used to, they both, J and B and Clarks used to have a truck that they would rent. But not anymore. What about? They got rid of it because of insurance purposes. Any other place you can rent a truck? And it's not like you're renting, you know, a minivan, obviously. Well, for summertime use, yeah, we could go rent a truck for summertime use, but, but not, not everybody rent. has a truck ready to plow and sink. Right. It's, it's kind of right. a, you know. So it sounds to me like what I'm hearing is we want to go with repairing and putting in this new motor in the old truck so that we can have it for trade. You're going to check with J&B to see if they have a slot for a Western Star? Yeah. And we want to go with the lease purchase so we can do it sooner because we don't have to have time to have a special town meeting. Because you got to, you know, it'd take between the election coming up and stuff, it's going to take us a month or a month and a half because you have to give so much notice to have a special town meeting. It's either 30 days or 45 days. So I just, I have another question. Is a question Toby brought up that we couldn't get a Western Star until March fitted up. That came from JB, that information? Yes, that's what he told me originally. So, so maybe their slots are filled up. Correct, that may be the issue. And I talked to Sandy Ladd at Charlie Boyce today, and he said that he has one slot left. But we're not going to get the deal on fixing the. We'll not get the deal to repair the other well, I wonder if Charlie Boyce would tell that they picked that thing up at JB and they would give us. And this is getting complicated. Well, right. So no, they, 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 they don't feel the responsibility of blowing up a motor in a truck they sold. That's why, no, we, I, have, I know that's that. why we have the leverage on J&B as well as it does. Right. If we take that truck anywhere else, we're going to pay, pay full board to do it. And right. if we, Charlie Boys only give us probably $8,500 for it, too. They'll, as is. As is, with no motor in it, they'll give you $8,500. Charlie Boys. Yeah. I'll give you eighty eighty five hundred dollars for it. <laughs> the way, the way it is. And I'll rate. take the load of sand too. <laughs> <laughs> is it loaded? And then, it's he'll loaded? A, yeah. then he'll put a motor in it and he'll have a fifty thousand dollar truck. But yeah. we don't want to do that. That's yeah. not like that's this. not responsible to let that truck go for eighty five hundred dollars. You've got right. sixty five hundred dollars right. worth of rubber underneath. Right. It. Yeah. Can't right. do that. Right. I won't do it. Yeah. 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 That's not responsible. So I that? think I think we're stuck. We have to fix that truck. Right. We have to fix it. So the choices we have are either a used motor or a brand new motor. Okay. So I think but, what I right. But so. But what the I problem what I, is we're obligating ourselves to buy from J and B, and he may not have a truck no, for us. No. 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 That's only if we accept the ten thousand dollars from Navis. Oh, J and B will still fix the truck. J and B will still fix these prices that I just gave you for fixing. Mm -hmm. Are independent of our purchase. independent. So oh. if we if we Let's commit to that. buying a junk a. Uh, 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 I almost said junk, but it's not a, an international. 
if we commit to buying an international, we take ten thousand dollars off both of those fixes. Okay. So fifteen grand for the for the second hand motor now becomes five grand out of the town's yeah. pocket. Yeah. And the twenty nine now becomes nineteen okay. if we commit to an international. Okay. But we don't but we don't want an international. My either. stomach turns about right. international. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After this. Right. So I think that we are forgetting about that ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Right. And so now our decision is do we put a used motor or a right. new motor? Okay. So we have to fix this truck. A new motor doesn't sound like so I think the question then you need to pose is ask J and B if there any way we can get a truck on this this year model's truck, model truck, because we heard from that there's other other suppliers who could get us one. Um, if they say absolutely not, then I think we then ask, um, I lost my train of thought. Charlie Boys. Oh, ask Charlie Boys what they would give us trade on the running truck with, with the used motor. So you're suggesting then, to go with the used motor? Right, because we have to special order a new motor, and that's a whole oh, project. That's another whole project. So get the used motor, um, and then ask, um, I mean, Charlie Boy, Charlie Boy just needs to know we got a truck with this many hours on it or miles, however you calculate it. What will you give us trade? He doesn't need to know about blown motor. They probably know about it. We already know. They know. Everybody in the state knows about this motor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. All oh, right. I'm not kidding. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, We're a test case again. Yeah. 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 I mean, you've, you've done a really good job doing research and getting prices. And well, I beat him three thousand dollars just in a conversation. Right. He came right. up here with fifteen, fifteen nine, and I got him down to thirteen. No, you had you did a good job on repairing that yeah. on that motor, and and I think if we put the used motor in there and we limp it along, we now still we have a, we have our spare truck back, if it does get into winter, mm -hmm. and. Would you use that truck as the spare instead of the current I, spare? I would. I would have to do so that. So you would yeah. use the truck that we are... Okay. We'd use the spare as our primary, and this would just be back up. Right? Yeah, until we get the yeah. new truck. And we're yeah. not racking up miles on it. We're not, you know, we're not... Using we're not going to loan it to anybody. We're not going to loan it to Worcester or Woodbury fair, right? or... I think we just right. park it. Park it as much as possible. Cliff? Oh, yeah. So they won't, if we go with JMB, the used motor, they won't give us any kind of warranty at all. That's confirmed. Um, I didn't ask that specific question, but it's a used motor. I can't imagine. I wouldn't imagine they do anything imagine. other than saying our work. We mean, they won't honor our warranty, our warranty that ran out a month before this right. catastrophic incident. Right. A month. But, I would but that was a manufacturer warranty, though, right? No, it was an extended warranty. Oh. Extended J and B. It was a special J and B. Extended warranty. Extended warranty. Yeah. So, did you have anything else? About so, I, the warranty is, is, I'm pretty certain, not, not there for us. Yeah. The used motor. Have we gotten any quotes or rough figures indicating we didn't do a deal with J and B? and we just got somebody to put a motor into that truck regardless of whether it was used or new, what that would cost? I got a price from Clark's. Okay. Do you remember what that was? motor and it was 34000 Okay. It was way more, way more than J&B's original, original. But again, they, they would have to special order the motor and they'd have to and they right, said, there's no tool up there. and everything else. I mean, that's... Right. Well, that's and that's that's what's pushing me to go with this used machine, this used motor, is I can have it in yeah, two weeks. Right the now, truck's running right. down the road in two no, weeks. I don't think we disagree with that. I mean, that's the only thing that's attractive. So, I would love to have a brand new motor in there. I would. Then I would. Then I could worry free for for a right. year. So, okay. So here's this is where, what I'm hearing then. So maybe we can all come to some kind of an agreement that we would put in the used motor. Bring the truck back, including the load of sand. It would become the spare and only be used by Callus. You wouldn't loan it out to anybody given the situation. Right. We would see if J and B has a slot available for a Western Star lease to purchase. Um, and if they don't, then I think we have to go and look at this 
Charlie Boy's face, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. To get, I mean, you got to have to find out like tomorrow or the next day whether they have a slot because what Toby's saying is that other slot's available but not for long. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think is that what I'm hearing? Is do, is that what you agree mm -hmm. with? So that Alfred has a, something that he can go on and, and get this done because it's been going on for meeting after meeting. All right, Cliff. So I just found the end. Cliff. Yeah, I agree with um, this course proposed course of action. We er, we're not under any obligation of J and B to buy something from them if they put this used engine in for us at the what they the price they've given us. That's right. You have okay. no tie. So, no. But if we did the new one, I think. No. 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 Okay. No. Okay. Okay. So those prices I gave you does not include, include $10,000. There's no strings attached. Right. There's no, no strings, strings attached. Okay. okay. So I think so that's... the other thing would be, in going this route, we put the used engine in, we keep this truck on ice as much as possible, and that also would provide an opportunity for Toby to see if he could find a buyer for it while mm -hmm. it's sitting. Good that's thing. a good idea. Can you do that, Toby? Okay. But you always but, sell but once fire trucks. So. Okay. <laughs> they have water instead of standing. Um, yeah, we do right. So the thing right. is, once we put the motor back in, then the truck is a tradable truck. So wherever we go, we're going to get the best right. value right. by trading. Right. 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 So that's the only thing that we really should consider once we get the truck back is right. use it as a trade vehicle. Right. Right. If you can't sell it out right quickly, then we'll have to use it as trade. I think we should just right. make that phone call. That Charlie Boy and see what the trade would be with the right. truck running. So I, 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 once they give us a higher trade, right. it's thirty-five thousand. Pardon me. It's thirty-five thousand. Charlie Boy's in the He told me. He told me that he he just offered a trade. For so it's twelve thousand left. Less so than a trade than we would get yeah. from. And Charlie Boy's new new truck price would be about the same as J and B's. Yeah, J and B's was one eleven. Um, Charlie Boy's is one sixteen. He's up higher than everybody. Well, it's New York. Trade. New York. No, he's in Milton. Oh, Milton. Right, but they also don't like this international. They know this international. Yeah, right. I, I they know it's right. track record. Right. All right. So does that is that good? Is everybody on the same page? So we we'll good with that. So I'm paying paying J and B thirteen five for a used motor. Mm -hmm. Right. Installed, installed running down the road. Right. Stop. You're going to bring it back to Callus, it's going to sit there unless it's absolutely <coughs> minimal. And we're not going to loan it out to anybody because we know what can happen. I mean, if anybody's going to drive it, it's going to be, for whatever reason, it's going to be like you or somebody right. that would well, I, pay attention to noises. I know everybody's a little bit gun shy about these motors. I am as well. But JMB's not going to put a motor in there that's going to blow up tomorrow. And he doesn't need that in his on his record. Yeah, but he's no. not, he can't know what's going on internally. I mean, they can sound good. Right. Well, no, but I mean, compression. It wasn't a mean? compression. And what do you do with a motor? You do compression. It wasn't a compression issue. It would test out perfect. That our motor that blew would test out perfectly, right? And that was probably a bearing thing so or an overheating so thing. Or overheating, right? Yeah. yeah. So. That just happens. So, and then the other piece of this is you're going to check with JMV to see if they have a slot open. If not, we're going to go talk to Charlie Boy, try to get them down to the price of JMV. So, 111 versus 116, that's $5 difference. 5000 5000 Oh. Right. Yep. Uh, and where did I see the, <laughs> the original quote that I got from Charlie Boy's was more than that. So this is the latest that I got today. Okay. So there's very many changes in the spec too. I would definitely take a look at those specs because there's a, a lot of money can change. Yep. It's right there, 139, 136 now. That was the very first quote that I got from Sandy oh. way, way, way back. So it should, be, it should be the same spec because I didn't ask for the changes. So I'm just saying, I got caught yeah. once before, yeah. and that's why I don't do business with Clarks, is because they changed the spec. We can look they at quoted it. me a price, and then when the when it come time for us to decide, the spec was totally different. So then you had, it was a lesser lesser truck. The, right. the rear ends were less weight. Everything yeah. was less. Oh, so they kind of. I don't do business with Clarks because yeah. of that. They tried yeah. to pull one over on us. Yeah. And so I will 
just make sure that those specs are, are, are Yeah, I mean, you should obviously should really scrutinize them. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Does that make sense? So I guess the question is, if the spec is good and we talk them down to 5,000 plus or minus, are we moving ahead? Yes. Yeah, so and signing a lease and of course. Yeah, taking and the slot so we can move yes. ahead? That's what we want to do. Yes, it would be a okay. lease. I just, just, just want to make tomorrow. sure. If you can clear all that out up by tomorrow, you, you, you agree to a lease purchase tomorrow. Okay. Is that good for you? Yes. I'd love to drive into Western Star. <laughs> All right, so, great. so we will yeah, find out the value. We'll we'll talk to Sandy. I'll talk to Sandy tonight and say, okay, we're gonna we want to have a 2012 International with a plow and a body, mm -hmm. traded in with a used motor in it, ready to go. Give me the price and the trade in, mm -hmm. and I'll have Alfred make sure that the spec is exactly what he wants. And the motor, we'll try to, we'll try to the motor is, is miles or hours comparable to the original truck. Whatever. So, so, so basically what's on the odometer is what they're getting. It's not like they have to make any adjustments. Right. But if he has a slot, we should jump on it yes. for a Western Star. Yes, absolutely. Right. I think that's, that is what we're saying. Okay. But if we, that's what I heard. I think, I think if, if we can do that through JBS, who we do it out of, you know, out of sense loyalty. of obligation. But you got we got to department to run, right? Yeah. If they can't meet our needs and And we're already it's already gonna be late getting it, but give J and B the first option. Yeah, you know, personally I, I don't know what their percentage markup is on these things, but when, when all fitted up, we'd be buying from J and B a hundred and eighty thousand dollar truck and with a warranty being <coughs> expired for a mere month, they couldn't say, look, it's expired but we're willing to comp you a used motor we got one in the back of the shop it's going to cut it would normally cost you 15 8 75 but we're going to give it to you that would be would have been such an act of good faith and it's for someone that does the kind of volume they do and when you run a selling with equipment 180k a piece i think that's really bad business personally i'm a little disappointed maybe their margins aren't that good well a different company does the fit up Right. So JB just does the cabin chassis. Oh, oh a okay. different I thought, company I thought does JB all. did it all. No, no, no. no. They do, they do all the cabin the chassis. chassis. Uh, but still. Uh, yeah, but Clark used to do soup number. to nuts, right? What's that? Clark used to do both, right? No. 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 Okay. Clark <coughs> sometimes will will buy the equipment so that they've got a truck all together. Then they'll uh, sell the truck fitted. Mm. But not always. Not most uh, most most towns that buy a truck buy a cabin chassis, mm -hmm. and then they hire HP Fairfield or Viking to to put it together. Uh, it's okay. only it's only on occasion that that a J and B or a Clark's will buy a truck, <coughs> buy the equipment for a truck and put it together so that they can have it on their showcase. Uh, that's it. That, they're two separate companies. Okay. And most road guys prefer one plow versus another versus right. a body versus right. this versus that. So it's, right. you know. So you could build the truck to and, your. And to maybe nobody would like the combination you put together. So right. That's right. the problem you face as well. And you invested that extra 70 grand in a truck that you might not sell. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're good. Have a good night's okay. sleep. <laughs> now you know now, right? Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's, it. it's just. It's just a, a decision that we've been struggling with, and I think we just made it. Right, and I think I think it was a good process for all of us to understand. Yeah. And <laughs> you did, and like I said, I think you did a great job did working with J and B and negotiating and all that stuff. So thank you. You're not done. Yes, thank you. <laughs> You're halfway there. <laughs> halfway there, right? Uh, anything else on the agenda that I need to be here for? Tell us yeah. about the trees. Oh, the trees! I brought show and tell. You didn't the see trees. it out there. Uh, oh, is that what is you that? You brought a tree. Part of it. Yeah. I saw yeah, that. Yeah, the hollow part of the tree. What is? Is that the basswood tree? That's the basswood tree. Mm -hmm. and that is, is it hollow? It is yeah, hollow. It's, good call. Good it's call. like six feet up. It was hollow. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you don't even get a good saw. I mean, saw that, that piece that I cut out was six like feet that. up. So the hollow part went even further. Can, uh, I, have, can I have a piece? Thank you. You can have that piece. Yeah. Oh, that, cool. that is cool. Oh, where is it? I don't know, where is this tree? It's right there. Go look outside the door. Door? Go look. You 
walked right by it? You walked right by it. Anything else? Oh, God. <laughs> and so now where was that? Then it was Bass. Jack Hill. There's not that Jack many Hill, Bass Moscow Bass Bass Woods Bass intersection. Bass it must right. Bass Woods. Yeah. hearing on it, and and uh, it was declared that it was that it was a hazard tree. Yeah. Right, and, and that's, that's the proof. Yeah. So we so should something trust. We should trust it. our forest or our tree, tree water. water. Yes, we should. Where are the carpenter ants? I got, got rid of those. You beat them out of there? Got rid of those, yeah. Did, did a lot of dead things come running? I mean, a lot of critters come running out of there? Didn't see them. I mean, it happened so fast. Yeah. Was, I mean, there's not a lot of basswood trees around, right? Oh, there's a million. Yeah, there's a lot. Oh, there is? There's a lot. It's, yeah. it's a junk tree. It's really not. They're all around my field. I, know. Oh, I never heard of them They, they kind of can look like ash. I'm like, oh, look at that ash. I'm like, oh, no, it's basswood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you. I thought of you. making a couple of drums. Out of, out of the hollow. There you um, go. You know, cut them into where, and then So where is the rest of the tree? It's underground. It's gone. No. Oh. Underground. <laughs> well, I don't have much of a place to put brush and stuff right. like that. So the project on Apple Hill, mm -hmm. we found a site, uh, Sandy, Sandy, what's his last name? Uh, uh, the people that came in for the hearing. Well, they were cool. here for the hearing on Apple Hill. <laughs> they have a pond that was supposed to was meant to be a pond. It's a big hole in the ground. They want to fill it. In. Uh, so I've been bringing them dirt. And oh, good. So we have our ash dump. Well, yeah. As long as right. as long as it's we'll, we'll accept it. They want right. it filled soon. So yeah. I'm trying to get as much stuff in there as I can. Good. But they're super kind to. Oh, well, this is the old Chamberlain place. The old Chamberlain. Yeah. You're filling that. Well, they dug a hole that Jim dug out. Dug a hole with no water. Yeah, trust me, I what know all he, about what that. What was he doing? Trying to get a pond? Yeah. He wanted to put a pond in a place that was the absolute wrong place, and I told him not to do that. And he drilled a well because he's going to fill the well. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah. Okay. So we'll yeah. fill in the pond. All right. So, so let us let us you can let us know at the next meeting or or send us an send us an email or give me a call or yeah. we'll be coming out to the town garage. Don't forget. Next Monday, the July second. No, we're all second. soil one, right? Soil. Are you guys? I traded it for topsoil or something. Right? No, we went to we went to uh, Pat Malone's. He just gave it away. Can I? So, are you there July second at the garage? As far as I know. Okay, I just it's just July fourth week. I just didn't know if you guys oh, were all I, there. I won't be going away. Okay, because Cliff and I will be out like around nine thirty. Wait, we're there at six. <laughs> I'm not coming there at six. I get here at eight right. for town hall okay, meetings. pushing it. We'll see you at six, and if you're not there, we'll just work, work without you. Nine thirty, and I'll bring some goodies. How about uh, that? No, uh, don't tell us. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thanks, Alfred. Thanks to me. Oh man, what a mess! This whole motor thing has been going on for about months. Oh, way longer than that, I think. Yeah. It's not, I mean, the resolution's not a good one. No, what else Whatever. are we going to do? There's better and there's worse, but there's no good one. No. I mean, I think we're doing the best we can by the taxpayers yeah. this way. It's a bad scene. It is a bad scene, and that, and I don't blame Alfred for not wanting to get another international. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't it gives them a really, yeah. it gives them a black eye. It really does, especially when they wouldn't really help us out. There and was. we just have to make sure that on that capital plan for replacing these trucks, I mean, trying to get seven years out of well, something like that. I know Greg recommends a five-year plan, right? Well, we'll maybe the Western one. Star is the last one. Yeah. Well, I think that's something we have to look at. Yeah. And, you know, maybe Greg would agree that they are a better truck. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Because they get a, they get a lot of use on these. recommendation of the five-year yeah. plan based upon five-year warranty. Yeah. Right, but he didn't know that this other truck was under a seven-year warranty, mm -hmm. and it was seven years and one month. Mm -hmm. All right, we got to move on, or yes. else we're going to be here forever. Um, are you good, John, with all the truck stuff now? Me? Are you okay? Move on. Let's talk some more. I've heard enough about trucks. It's like talking to me. We didn't get, we didn't get a color. Red. I think now it's time to change the color. Okay, I want blue. Got MP3 jacks in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Conservation Commission would like to use some money out of the conservation fund 
I think there's like four grand or something in there now, and 8,000 will be going in as of July 1st. They obviously don't want to use that much. They would like to have Matt Peters come and meet with them for like four hours. He charges $54 an hour. That comes to $216. And then they're working with some of the landowners, remember, that had the natural resources inventory stuff done. Yeah. And some of those landowners they're working with to try to get them to pay half, and the town would pay half to do a, a better study. So do we want to authorize them to be able to spend up to $1,000 and then if they need more they have to come back to us? Does that make sense? So 1000 So do the math again, $54 an $54 hour. $54 an hour. They're thinking. They're going to ask Matt Peters to meet with the Conservation Commission at $54 an hour for four hours. That comes to $216. If Matt works with some landowners, the ones that had the natural resources inventory done, the landowner pays half of Matt's hourly wage, the town pays half. So that comes out to what? 20, 54 divided by two. 27. So the town would pay 27, the landowner would pay 27. So that gives them quite a bit of, um, hours to use if they use that money. Yeah. So I would make a motion that we authorize the Conservation Commission to spend an amount not to exceed $1,000 for Matt Peters to do further work on the Natural Resources Inventory, um, meeting with the Conservation Commission, and meeting with landowners. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Further discussion? I, I just hope that it doesn't become an accounting nightmare. You know, not. as far as la landowners and yeah. yeah, yeah, you know. So we gotta make sure well, that well, they let them. Yeah, they gotta figure that out because they've yeah. gotta give Matt, it. Well, it's really up to Matt Peters to hourly sign a contract. We we only obligated up to a certain amount. Right. Yeah, okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, we're not gonna be backing up the landowners. They don't pay no. the bill. No, no, we're not. The conservation commission to yeah. make sure of that. Yeah. So we can add an amendment to the motion to say that um, any work with landowners, the town is only paying half of Matt's hourly rate. Right. Requires Matt to. And requires Matt to do the. To invoice. handle the contract with the landowners and the can, cannot obligate the town for any more than twenty-seven dollars an hour, regardless of what he receives. Did you do that last part? Yeah, you said. Just um, that last part. Um, that Matt Peters um, understands that the town is only obligating itself for the landowner work at a rate of twenty-seven dollars an hour, and it's up to him to collect any balances from the landowners, and that the town is not committing to covering defaults. Yeah, by landowners. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Rose. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there a second to the amendment? Got it. OK. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. OK. And when Katie does the draft minutes, I'll send them to the Conservation Commission so they know. Yeah. All right, treasurer update. So Sandra. She has been working her butt off. Yeah, yeah. Been her mental is every, wonderful. Well, I asked her to do this because she has a sick and injured daughter. Oh. So I was trying to find a way for her not to have to come in. Excellent. Um, so in addition to the memo, she put together the packet with um, the budget to actual and the delinquent tax report. So I guess this Do you have an extra one for Katie? Or? Sure. It was going to be for Sharon, but she's not here. Okay. So I think we all read the memo. Mm -hmm. The auditors I met, I was in here. Were you here with me? When we met, yeah, we met the audit. It was Wednesday, we met the auditors. They're very good. From Powers from and Sullivan. Sullivan and Powers. I mean, those guys, in two days, they read all these minutes, and they reviewed this, and they reviewed that, and they went back to their office and said that they can, um, you know, a couple more weeks, and they'll close out FY17, and they'll work on 18. Um, 
one of the things we have to do tonight is I don't think we want to review this line by line here tonight, this budget to actual, but I will review it at home between now and the next meeting. And maybe depending on what questions we have, we can ask Sandra to come in and talk to the board or put together some questions and get her to answer them for us. Um, so that's where we're at with the end of the fiscal year update, Sullivan and Powers. We have the loan documents here to sign tonight that we talked about um, for the town hall. And the interest rate is? That was a score. That was very good. Like I said, she's done a bang up job. 2.74 Excellent. for the $200,000 um, loan for improvements to the town hall. Good. So we've got a bunch of places we need to sign it, but we need to make a motion for us to sign the town hall loan documents. Okay, with well, community, what's the loan amount? It, the loan is from Community Bank. The amount of the loan is 200000 The interest rate is 2.74%, and the um, loan runs from June 30th, 2018, 2018 and 2019, 20, 2019 the first 2023. The first payment is due next year. Next at the end of June of 2019, because we're in 18. Um, and they're going to look at the audit when it's done. So they were willing to, to waive that requirement because it was being worked on. Um, so I think it. Good. So, so can we use that as the motion? Did you get that? Mm -hmm. So I'll make the motion. I need a second. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So I'll pass this around. Every place that there's a green arrow, we need to sign. Okay. And we'll have the money. Did she say in her memo when we have the money? Yes. It's like first or second first week or second of July. July 2018. And that is what the voters authorized us to borrow. So okay. Um, what else? Audit. She explains about the audit. Consolidation of bank accounts. Yeah, we did that last time. We had yeah, a motion last we time. About yeah. That. Um, I uh, Nemric, she's been working with um, Cynthia from Nemric, who I met was Wednesday, right? We met Cynthia, um, and they have done a bang up job. She's going to be on Friday this week, hand inputting each employee into Nemric because you have to do each person individually. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, she agreed to continue to pay the road crew weekly. It wasn't an issue. Um, so Emmerich will be online effective for July 1st. Jesus Christ. I know. You've done a marvelous job. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not paying attention. Here we go. Thank you. Sorry. OK, a couple, couple other things. Um, right now, like the end of the year is June 30th. That falls on a Saturday. <coughs> There will be some last minute invoices that need to get paid. We don't meet again until July 9th. So Sandra suggested that we have like, maybe me and somebody else from the board authorized to sign off on orders and in instances like this where there's a holiday, where there's the end of the fiscal year. So it's some kind of an emergency. So moved. Just we need to have to we have to say who? You. Okay. Sure. All right. You do all that stuff. So um, <laughs> I, we, we just needed to have it in the record. Yeah. And then, of course, the orders would come to the board the next full meeting to be reviewed, just like mm -hmm. we do now. Yeah. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Who seconded that one? No. Rose did. Oh, sorry. Can I borrow your black pen because I don't want to sign this in blue? Oh, come on. I want to be symmetrical. Okay. The new copiers here. Mine was blue. No, this is all black. He's colorblind. 
Mine's black. So th- did you see the new copy or probably yeah. not since you didn't notice the log? I didn't the, notice the log. On the front porch. The log in my eye. <laughs> okay. That's here, and when that's installed, like Katie or Cliff or somebody, you're going to want to be able to mm-hmm. magically be able to print. So, um... And it's got Wi-Fi, like, like Bluetooth or something? You I can don't know. Print to it. I don't know. I don't know. Can they set it up so she can print from home? I might be able to if it's a Wi-Fi connection. Yeah. Because then if it's... we needed something for our meeting, you could just... Zing it there, and it'll be all here and copied when we got here. It's high tech. Wouldn't that be cool? You could also take your flying saucer down here. <laughs> <It's gross. laughs> uh, you know. Okay. Yeah, they're installed tomorrow, so that would be a question. It's like a smartphone. Ask the it's a smartphone. Yeah. I don't know. Can we yeah. access this from or inside the like network? A, and sometimes you want to be able to get into stuff, mm-hmm. so you, you need to have access to. You need. You probably need to have some kind of access to that printer, right? I don't need it. Yeah, you know, same thing. We're here in a meeting and we <coughs> right. print something yeah. out. So you and Katie should both probably somehow have access. I'm mean, sure if we're in the building, that's not going to be a problem. The question right. is, can, can it be it done remotely? Externally, when right. you're not on the network. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice if you could, but maybe it's not possible. Like I can pull up and go into a back door and I can print out reams and reams of paper in Switzerland. It'll take me a year to figure out who did that. Oh, so if you can do it from here to Switzerland. Is that true? Yes. You can do that there. Yeah, but the caveat is, is I have to get into their their um, enterprise resource management software. Oh. Mm-hmm. That would ultimately be the trail that I could figure out. Hey, can you tell other He's people? He's going to be on NCIS. <laughs> He's going to be on NCIS, helping them figure out all this stuff. Is that right? <laughs> oh, wow. I'm gonna have to watch that. Okay, um, I think that pretty much takes care of Sandra's email. I mean, her memo. Except that we still, the legislature hasn't done anything, have they? Yes, they voted the budget through a third budget, and it's on the governor's desk, waiting signature to be vetoed. And it's probably gonna get vetoed. Well, we'll Is that see. Tomorrow? Um, he's got till the end of the week to vote uh, to sign it. I, I just can't see anyone vetoing that and sending the state into total disarray. Pension checks are likely not to be paid. Oh. Well, they, I, boy, I don't think, boy, this. Talk about getting people in an Three strikes order. and you're out. There's this Act 46 thing. Right. There's, what was the prior thing? Um, oh, the school funding thing. Yeah. And this, and a, there was a third veto, and the state got shut down financially. That would not look good. That was that's. But anyways, so you don't have heard any. Good. Well, I heard it got this. The House passed it this morning, and the Senate passed this afternoon unanimously. So that means all the Republicans. Mm-hmm. Do they have enough the to override the veto? I don't know, because it's usually the, they, they can have a vote. House of vote that's unanimous and the Senate vote that's unanimous, but then when it comes to a veto override, the, the parties tend to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. To the second iteration. Yeah. Right. So we may have to. Not cool. Nuts. So we may have to. I talked to Sandra. If that happens and the state shuts down and stuff, we can still set the town tax rate, and we just may have to end up sending out two sets of tax bills. One for the town, and then when the budget stuff gets done at the big house, send out another. Because what will happen is if we don't send out the town, we won't have any money to operate. Wow. So I don't think they realize in Montpelier what this could mean to towns. All, of, all these towns are going to have to take out loans in anticipation of taxes or send out two different sets of tax bills. For us, I think Sandra, I asked. Well, the state usually reimburses us July one. Or commits well, no, to it. no, right? They commit to it, so that you know how to how much to set your school tax rate, oh, and right. then we send out the tax bills. Remember, we send out right. the tax bill as one. Now, here's your first installment to the town, and the second is always the school. So now, what we might have to do is send out just the town tax bill, 
close. So that we have some money coming in in August Holy to smokes. operate. Otherwise, we're going to have to take... A couple years ago, though, we were two thing. equal installments. Right, but we're going to have, we may have to do it different. Yeah. And I think Sandra said it was going to be on, it was like less than 250 maybe, to send out two separate tax bills, but we may have to. So stay tuned. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I don't know if you can watch. Sounds like you should be on CAX, Denise. <laughs> Explaining this to the powers that be. So here we are. But I think it would. I think we're gonna. My recommendation would be that we would send out at least the town share, so we have some money coming in in August. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Yeah, because it's due 30 days after, after the right, right. So we would have to set the tax rate at our July 9th meeting. Okay. Well, I think that's I think that's pretty much it on the treasurer front. Do you have anything else? Brian is tax report. That's part of the package. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Glad to have that. I mean, we're down. Delinquent taxes. We have like I forget how much she said. We're the total amount of delinquent taxes from when not Nadine, but the previous mm -hmm. tax collector had it was like in the 200,000 wow. and the dean got it way down yes, she did. we are now at 16,612 dollars in delinquent taxes compared to what we were probably five years ago six years ago mm -hmm. so they've done an excellent job mm -hmm. excellent job mm -hmm. okay some other stuff that's going on clg grant rfp for east cows village um, if you remember right, Scott told us a while back that they had applied for the grant with, um, who is it with? It's CLG. Certified so, local so certified government. Certified local government, right. And um, we got the grant. Now they've put out the RFPs <coughs> for the grant. Um, Can you remind me, Madam Chair, what the work to be done is for this? They have to hire a consultant to put together all of the historic buildings and just register. put it on the National mm -hmm. Register because it has to meet certain criteria to go on the National Historic Register. So the consultant has to do all this work to say this is historic, that's historic, you yeah. know, that stuff. And what's the benefit that that work, once it's on the Historic Register, what's the benefit to the town? Or the um, it, it helps us to get grants for other things. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So let's say we had some, maybe we had a bridge need to be replaced in the village. With wood guardrails. Right. <laughs> there you go. So it, it does it does give us some opportunities. The um and I had this North one. KLS already has it. Kent's corner or Kent corner. All right. Kent, yeah. So and I had it written down. Wow. Yeah. How do yeah. you know so much? Because I read the homework. Oh. <laughs> right? Yeah. So anyways, the grant is... Apparently um, I didn't. Oh, here we go. The uh, I National Historic ultra, Register. Ultra smart. Um, Fool me again. The grant is... <laughs> I am smart. <laughs> so the town... We're asking the state for $10,700, and our in-kind share is 7160 <clears throat> So there's about 26 different people to send this RFP to, and um, I'll be helping to get that out. Wow. Maybe, maybe Barbara and I can do it together. Um, so there, that's what that is. All right, contract with the Washington County Sheriff. This is, um, they're not raising our rates. The hourly rate remains at 28.75, and I don't know if they filled in the amount. Time, to mind, time to mind your speed That's on right. town roads. <laughs> so we need to fill in the amount. And the amount we budgeted for for sheriff's patrols. Now I just had that. Where did it go? I'll tell you, 35 miles an hour is fast. I was yeah. driving into Adamant. I was going, I know I was going 30. Actually, I was going like 34. But I was looking at my gauges happen to be, and I come around the corner, it's, it's time in after, late afternoon, it was shady and kind of looking dark and it was cloudy. 
and there was a resident come across, and it was like between the shade and everything, and maybe my old eyes um, as a contributing factor. I was like, whoa. And I slowed down, like, wow, I didn't see him. They're like, you need to slow down. And I said, I was going to speed limit. No, you weren't. And I was. 35 is fast. It's a big difference between 30 and 35 in terms of what you perceive. Mm -hmm. Just FYI. Well, do you want to approve the sheriff's contract and we fill in the amount when I find it in the budget? Is this I, like, it's like 3000 It's or? either 3000 or 3500 mm -hmm. Why can't I? It's got to be in here. Where did it go? I just had it. Other disbursements? Maybe? Not under highway, I know that. Ambulance, fire. Well, while we're looking for that amount, we also need to approve. What page are you on? 23 right now. Um, we also need to approve the, there you go, the Woodbury Fire Department contract. And that is, I checked the, I checked the budget. It's 17850 for the truck. Operating is 30535 and that's exactly what we budgeted. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need a motion to approve and sign that. Did you notice, Denise, in their contract they had a typo? No. Where right it? there in paragraph six, it says in words, the sum $28,650, and then in parentheses it says $30,530. Ooh. Well, I'll scratch so that out. Yeah, so the, and the, the, and the next sure. amount is the yeah. same thing. Right. It says 7,162, but yeah, so. Wow. Yeah. Good catch. Because yeah. I did my homework. <laughs> and I just thought you were smart again. She is. <laughs> and she's going to say, I am smart. <laughs> <laughs> did you find it in there, Rose? The, um, okay, here's the Woodbury thing. All right, so we're going to 28,600. And fifty dollars, and that's not right. I wonder if they plagiarized from the contract. I think they just copied. They just copied from last year. Uh -oh. they, and it's Chance Payette now, who is the one that contacted me. Hmm. And where else do you said it was in here twice, Rose? Three times. Is it all three, three of those numbers? All right? three of those numbers. The spelled out version is incorrect in all three clauses. 7,162 and it's 7,633. And tell me again, where's the, where's the other one? It's all in the same paragraph. There's three. Oh, okay. 14,000 and it's not. <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to go with the... So you need to initial. Yeah, so we're just going to go with the... Um, okay, found it. ...written amount. Where did... What page, Rose? Sheriff's Patrol is on page 24. It's about two-thirds of the way down, number 6550, Sheriff's Patrol. Aha. Uh -huh. $3,000. 3000 mm -hmm. So I assume that that's what we still want to go with. Um, and this contract runs from July 1, 18 through June 30 of 19. And it's the same thing as, same contract as always. Okay, for, well, we don't know how many. To the length and amount of the contract is $3,000. So did anybody make those motions? Okay, so I'll make a motion that we approve the Washington County Sheriff's Department annual contract for $3,000 from June 7-1 to 6-30 of next year. Okay. Anybody want to second that? I'll second. Oops. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, I'll send this around for... There's two places to sign. There's two contracts. We keep one. We send it. We send it both back so Sam can sign them, and they keep one, and they send us back one. 
Okay, Woodbury Fire Department with the chain with the corrections to the written dollar amounts. Let me see. It's, is there a signature line for all of us on the Woodbury? Yeah. Line? yeah. You want to make a motion? Okay. I, yeah, I will move that we accept the contract as proposed and as initialed. Uh, then uh, and as with the typos corrected as as um, as noted as noted by. Denise. Um, yep. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that's those things done. Um, I don't know how many people went to the play, but it was very well done. Exceeded my, I didn't know what to expect. I had no clue. But it was very, very well done. Sold out, I think, almost every night. Um, and now that the play is done, we'll be meeting on Wednesday morning. Um, the work can begin on the renovations. Gettys is all lined up. He actually came out and met with Alfred and the building um, general contractor committee. So he's good to go. David was concerned and as was historic preservation about the windows, even though this guy has a lot of experience. He was not, they were not convinced that the windows would be safe. So what they suggested after talking to, to Gettys, two places to sign, um, that they'll like, the windows go up and down, both the top and the bottom go up and down. They're gonna like leave them slightly open at the top and slightly open at the bottom. So if the building moves, it won't like, bang up the windows, bind up the windows. Um, Alfred's good to go on getting the road crew over there like mid-August to help with the excavation. Um, there's some issue with the septic. Don Marsh has been out to, with the, and Alfred dug the test pits with the town's yeah. equipment. Um, huh. So it may be, well, we don't know yet. We might know by Wednesday this week, but it's, it's definitely not going to be one that can be buried. It could, it could right. end up being a mound. It's got to be a mound, yeah. Or it could end up being like a tank that we have to have Oh, no. Pumped. Well, even if we get a mound, as I understand it, probably we'll have to pump it periodically, depending upon the size and frequency of events that occur right. there. Really? If it's just our municipal purposes, we're probably fine. But if we're hosting weddings or to play with right. the attendance that we got, then we would probably but, uh, have to pump But that it part, with, with a mound system? Yes. Even with a mound, yep. That doesn't make sense to me. They can't put a larger tank in. That's for solids. You pump the solids. I don't know. We're waiting for more updates on this whole issue. But we also talked about the possibility of when people want to have a wedding or whatever, that they have to rent a porta potty. Huh. Right, it's probably right. better. Including so, the contract. Yeah, right. That, that mound system would be a 40 foot wide by 100 foot long. <coughs> How many lines? Um, they didn't mention they that. They didn't mention that. Three, so probably four. I have no idea. Uh, so that's one of the. What these size tank? Didn't get that. The good news is there's high bearing capacity. What capacity? For the soil, there's high bearing capacity, so our foundation would be good. Yeah. So, um, what we need to do is the way that the RFP went out, the bids for the demolition are due in on, I think, tomorrow. The building committee is meeting on Wednesday. So we needed we need to see if we can do a del give Cliff and I the authority to say yes. What do you mean by demolition? The demolition of the inside. <clears throat> Who's doing that? The town is gonna do I don't know if the town is gonna pull off that wasn't the town gonna pull off that back end piece. All right. Um and then there's all the work inside to remove the so plumbing and electrical. Doing our piece for the interior demo? Yeah. 
But who's putting that together? Your RFPs? It's it, it, uh, it already went out. The uh, the general contracting committee people. Oh, okay. So put it together. It's Ernie and it's Scott Ernie and Jim. Wow. and Jim Clark. Oh, Jim Clark. Mm -hmm. What a crew. Mm -hmm. It's a All good start group. crew. It is. It's a really good group. Oh. A lot of knowledge there. How long has Jim been on? In the beginning. The general oh. contracting group. Wow. And they meet like every every Sunday morning. So um, so that they can get started on the demolition. Are you guys comfortable with their recommendation and Cliff and I saying Sure. Saying that that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then we can bring it back to the full board yeah. at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So we just want to put that in the minutes, Katie. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're selling the old cook stove out of there, or did they sell it already? Um, the, the cook stove in the kitchen, if I had room for it at my house, I would... The Glenwood? Mm-hmm. It's a nice old it's stove. A nice, it's a nice stove, and there's the two round wood stoves. Wood stoves. Yeah. Wood stoves. yeah. And what else? So what are they going to do? Are they going to put them up for sale? Yeah, after the play, Katie... Kate, I can't remember her name. Somebody, it almost sounds like Katie's name. In Maple Corner. Right, they're relatively new to the area, wanted to get involved in the community. Caitlin so, something or other. Right, and her and her husband are going to take photos. Yeah, okay. And yeah. work with um, KDK. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're going to try to get. Uh, looking at doing an um, uh, auction type thing. Really? Yeah. See if, um, See if we can get some money. A little yeah. bit. And the cook stove is Get you really deal nice. Get another player pan. No. <laughs> Thank you. I got no one scrolls, though. I got one of those. <laughs> those hunks of junk. Oh, that's right. Use that did. Another, um, another thing to fix. Mm-hmm. Your spare time. My long list of things to fix. If you know anyone who needs a range, there's one available. Yeah. yeah. I've got nearly the same Glenwood in our kitchen. Oh. I love it. It's great stuff. I mean, you have a cook stove? Mm-hmm. Okay. There's a guy who restores them up in Glover. Nice. Really I don't think I've ever noticed that. Good old. Yeah. Neat kitchen. Huh. Yeah, um, the door. So, anyways, that's kind of the update on the town hall issues. There's all these little bits and pieces of stuff. I've got a list of stuff to do. We're yeah. getting... We've got to move the electric line to a temporary location. When the building is done, all renovated, the electric line is going to be underground. Oh. Um, but while they're working, we have to have the power on a separate pedestal thing, along with the phone line and Wi-Fi, so that mm -hmm. the people working can have access to stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and Andy Felice is going to build the, the pedestal thing. Really? Yeah. So, oh. yeah, what else is going on? There's a whole list of all these little odds and ends things that people, you know, you don't even think about until it's like, oh yeah. Is he on the contracting committee too? Andy? Andy, no, he's not. I've just been hitting him up for doing things okay. because I think it's good to give the local guy the some business. What else, Cliff? We should ask um, at this meeting on Wednesday. It just occurs to me that since they're shutting off all of the systems. Uh, while crews are there doing work, we're going to need to have port potties there. Yeah, they're already looking to get port they're, potties. They're, they're yeah. the covered location. I think that's on the list. I don't think that's one of my things to do. That must have been on the meeting when I was out of town. Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. If, if not, I'll look at the list. I thought I had it with me, but I don't think I do. Because it's not on the minutes. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> From the last meeting hmm. that I was at. Well, if it's not there, then we should bring it up Just Wednesday. Sure it's been Cause, yeah, because they're going to have to have some place. And we thought we could use some of the old sinks and toilets, but no, we got to put in low flow. And then there was the issue that they found out about the, the hard, the, the wood on the downstairs floor. Mm -hmm. We thought we could reuse it. Yeah. And I guess it's like paper thin. Mm. After the flood, they had to resand the surface um, of it, and it's got many places very less thin. than three quarters. And even if you could pull it out, it's so brittle by the time you try to reinstall it. I yeah. remember, is that tongue and groove or is that plank? I think it's plank. Yeah. Um, hmm. 
there's maybe one quarter of the materials that we would be able to reuse. So um, working with David and historical preservation to see what kind of options other towns that have run into similar problems or other projects that have run into similar problems, what they've done. We know there is, you know, reclaimed uh, antique, if you will, wood out there available. It's expensive. But it's expensive, so what we would look to do is if we could get a practical solution of the main floor area using historically accurate wood, but for like the kitchen and the entrance area, use some other material, a composite flooring or something like this. So the areas that are going to get the heavy use and the mud off of people's feet and whatnot, um, they even use grates in places so mm -hmm. that we're not doing damage to the main wood floor. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's a, I mean, to, for historic preservation purposes, the floor is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it could be really costly, so we're going to have to work that out. The porta potty thing is on my list of things to do. Oh, okay. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> I've never ordered a porta potty before. Clawkins really is the one that. Cardigan? Clawkins? Clawkins. Cardigan is the one that they use at Curtis Pond, I think. Okay. Is that right? I guess we'll just use it. So we'll contract. see. We, are, we already have a contract with them. Maybe we can just bump off on that one. I saw somebody dump a tire or two. Uh, next to the porta potty and trash can there. Oh, nice. Wonderful. I don't know why people do that. It's just so. They save three dollars. They spend no. four dollars of gas driving it there. Um. Are you guys feel like you know what's going on with the town hall? Pretty much. You can come to a meeting anytime you want. Eight o'clock. When Wednesdays. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Stop by. I don't know. But if you happen to be in the area, just stop in and. Yeah. Um, Does, do we publish the minutes from the committee anywhere else than internally? Are we posting the website? I think they might be under this town, the town hall. I don't think we put them on the website just because. They're in the town hall drive, in Google Drive folders. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't think they go to the website. Mm -hmm. Um. Road crew job description. I didn't have Alfred and Toby stick around for this discussion. Not that they couldn't if they wanted to. But we've been working directly one-on-one -on -one with Alfred. Okay. And he's been very involved and very vocal in a good way. Mm -hmm. He's been very cooperative. So I think we're at a point now, um, it was in the, the, the drive, I think we're at a point now where we're ready to s just sign off on it. Alfred's pretty much agreed to everything in there. I think he's agreed to everything in there, right? He agreed to everything in yep. there. Um, you know, there's been some tweaks to the language, but the content and intent is intact as agreed upon with, with Alfred. Uh, really, we tried to explain to him that we wanted to give him a tool mm -hmm. that he can use mm -hmm. in evaluations mm -hmm. and also to justify... Uh, For instance... Pay. Right. Pay. You know, pay grades. Sure. And he was very resistant to the idea of, you know, road crew Titles. worker one, road crew yeah. worker two. Yeah. So the agreement yeah, so was we came up with right. the entry level. Entry yeah. junior. And so we yeah. defined that in terms of years of service, but we also put in a clause that says it's determined by years of service within the position or as determined by the road commissioner. Mm -hmm. If Alfred feels that even though you haven't been with the department five years, right. but you have experience that's commiserate, but we have one, um, and because we're on camera, I'm not going to mention names, mm -hmm. but we have one road crew worker who we need to do an evaluation for right away. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do is take this, if you guys will, if you can approve it tonight, and put it into like a spreadsheet mm -hmm. and say, you know, exceeds expectations, oh, right, meets right, expectations, right. Yeah. satisfactory, yeah. whatever. So all the offer has to do is go in and check the box. Mm -hmm. That's good. And that way, I think he would be able to justify to the board, us, that this particular employee is worthy of a mm -hmm. merit increase based on his abilities and his initiatives. Or credit for skills they bring to the job from previous experience. Right. Which and, is important to recognize. Right. And we'd like to get going on doing this evaluation for this individual so that we can right. make sure that he stays. 
And their raises become effective July 1st anyway. The right, but this would, we're looking at maybe giving him an additional merit because well, we've been there several times at the shop and he mm -hmm. is always busy. Always busy. Doesn't stand around with his hands in his pocket. He's always. It was important for Alfred that he have the tools to recognize when people exceed. are taking the initiative and exceeding expectations. Mm -hmm. Right, and he was, and he's good. Demonstrated to us that this particular person, in fact, does, and I've seen it myself. Yeah, I read the job description, and uh, I thought and very well done. And there's no reason why we can't change it if it doesn't work or Alfred has a different. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it, so it's because it says on the last page it can be updated, you know, by the select board at any time. Mm -hmm. So could we get a motion to approve the job description? Revise job description. I think it's great. Yeah. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, <laughs> that's done. Um, I wanted to give you a quick, well, it's not going to be quite so quick, but an update of stuff that I've been doing, um, and the auditors pointed out. We, do we have to do this? She's mm -hmm. of our conversation. Okay. Yeah. Um, the auditors, in the short time they were here, went and looked at minutes, and my pay had only been authorized through the end of June. So um, I would ask that you reauthorize the stipend, my monthly stipend. Yeah. So we need a motion to do that. Are we going to do this? I so we need to decide how long. I'd, I'd like to authorize it for the next quarter. Uh, July to August, September. Uh, August, September. The end of September, okay, so we're not going to remember. Do it on a quarterly basis. Okay. That's my proposal. Second. Okay. I'm not going to vote, but there's three of you to vote, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 And I'm going to abstain. Okay, you already gave us authority to review the demolition, demolition, demolition bids. Cliff and I, and then we'll report back. You already heard about the new copier. Here's a really nice thing. Remember Melanie from Fothergill? Mm -hmm. She left Fothergill. She's got, I don't know, she has five kids. So she's home with the kids for a while, and um, she has been coming in on her own time, free of charge, to help Sandra. Oh. Um, and she would like to be, she may want to be considered to be, you know, we have the auditor by charter. Even though the, the Sullivan and Powers people are liking the segregation of duties that we have currently, we still maybe want to still think about having an auditor for the charter. Melanie may be willing to do this at a volunteer basis. Why? Because she said that currently she doesn't sit on any boards or commissions or anything like that to give back to a community. Jeez. And she likes Callis? And she loves Callis and she likes us. Where does she live? She lives in like Essex or Milton or Williston or someplace. What? She needs to get away from the kids. Probably. Oh my goodness. But if we had an audit, if she would be willing to do that, um, you know, maybe she only has to come in every month or quarterly. And I would, I think we need to pay her gas miles, mm -hmm. even now. Very generous. And also, if she agrees to this, I would think I would insist that she take some kind of a stipend. Yeah, I was about to say. You know, I don't think anybody should do that, especially with five kids for free. But anyway, I thought it was really, really nice of her. And she knows our system. And she's the one who was, remember, encouraging us to switch to number. Mm -hmm. And now we're almost there, so she's thrilled. Awesome. Wow, that is good news. Yeah. Um, We've already did the signing warrant in between meetings. Okay, well, um, we talked about the person that needs to get evaluated on the road and through. Um, we, I mentioned when Toby and Alfred were here, we signed the letter of intent to participate in the CVRPC DEC, the Municipal Roads Grant and Aid Program. So that's just kind of like a re-upping. Um, I went to the uh, Planning Commission's meeting on June 19th. There was a couple of Conservation Commission members there. It started off a little awkward. 
but there's some history there. But it ended up, it was a great meeting. They did, they have worked so hard. Every member the of, the commission. of the planning commission was open-minded hmm. to making additional changes. They really, really tried hard to hear what was said the first time around and cooperate and make changes, and they're willing to continue to make changes. Um, Stephanie had some specific suggestions. Was this in specific to the shoreland? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and they said they would rather, like, not push it to get it to us, to get it to a vote next March. They'd rather do it right than mm -hmm. try to mm -hmm. cram it through, which I thought was great. Mm -hmm. They asked Stephanie to give them in writing her ideas and, and changes, and she agreed to do that. Wonderful. Um, yeah, no, it went, it went very, very well. They have clearly listened and put in a lot of time and effort. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed. It's an amazing change. Transformation. Yeah, it's just. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so that was that. We talked about the East Callis nomination. Um, Sandra asked the auditors, Sullivan and Powers, um, about domestic partner stuff because I'm having a heck of a time with that. And they found a federal regulation, which now I have something to go on. So I'll be picking that back up to see what's... Oh, well, insurance? Yeah, what, for domestic partners. Okay. One of the road crew wanted to know. Oh. And there are still struggling with that? I'm still struggling with that, but we'll get there. Um, Poplar Cemetery is going to become the property the of, of Callis at and some by, point again, here. To be clear, by statute, we're obligated to take this on? Right. And, and are we aware that things falling into the river? Well, that's some of the stuff that we sh should be aware of. We're taking on a huge, huge, potentially what? huge liability here financially. Well... C can Jim Barlow review this before we... Oh, yeah, I've already asked him to. Because uh, he laid out all these different things you got to make sure you do and check out. So, um, I mean, I don't know what the cost of, uh, first, I mean, rip wrapping a stream is a big deal, mm -hmm. right? Permitting wise and stuff. And there's a cost to that. And um, the longer you wait, I'm guessing the more extreme the response is going to need to be. And I don't, my recollection, it's a pretty high bluff there. I was near the and, Where is it? And it's off of Route 14 and it's all sand. And there are, um, Graves that are approaching the river, the new, the moving river bank, mm -hmm. and so then that, you know, do is are we going to have to deal with the grave relocation and the cost of that? I, I just just want us to understand right. what we're getting into. They're having a meeting on Wednesday night, but I, they, their meetings now always end up being when I have a health center board of directors meeting. But I can meet with a couple of the commissioners separately, but I've already got Jim in the loop, and he's gonna re review any documents before anything happens. Um, but I will bring these other issues up. Because hmm. that's important to know. Um, and so how does that affect the budget? I mean, all of a sudden, I know. You know, our cemetery budget is built on what we have, and now all of a sudden we have a new cemetery. So, I know. And and they've only got, I think there's maybe, because I asked how much money they had left in their endowment fund or whatever it is, a trust fund. It's like three thousand and something dollars. So, but it is by statute. And there's, there are. Few remaining funds carrying from the private nonprofit that we're taking it from. Yeah, that's the three thousand something dollars. Just three thousand. Yeah. So stay tuned on that one, um, and I really think I want Jim to be really involved in this because I don't want us to get in a mess. Mm -hmm. For sure. So um, I guess the question I had: Would you want? I mean, we're paying Jim so much a quarter, anyways. Mm -hmm. Is everybody okay with us just having Jim do this work and not take it out of the cemetery budget? Yeah. 
don't. Because I mean, I think it's a legal matter. It's pertaining to this yes. town and the Indiana. But it's it's a legal matter. It's right. The transfer of that real property, estate. real estate. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they have to do deeds and title searches and all that stuff. So. Um, so there. So that's what's going on with that. Mm -hmm. I noticed another um, biking thing over the weekend. I was waiting for my phone to ring. Oh yeah. But I think Quite that was one. I think that was the one that Judy sent the announcement out on that was gonna happen. So where, that, where are we heading with all that? Well I wanted to know if you wanted to we, took, we put pressure on the school and yet there's other things going on. There was no pressure quite I'm guessing, right? We didn't know about it. Right. 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 No, we didn't. So the question is, is do we want to put on the agenda for a future meeting to have to have a discussion about a special event ordinance? Yeah. You know? Okay. And do we think other towns are doing that? Berlin is. I have a sample from Berlin. And I'm not thinking and that this we whole thing with liability, the league, is it a real true liability or is it like you can you can get trouble for anything? Yeah, I don't know. A legal thing. We need to Well obviously have to have Jim involved in this. Because I personally don't why I have another no ordinance, we don't have to. I don't either. Yeah. But it is a liability issue. And the school insurance wouldn't put a waiver. I mean, our insurance doesn't cover it. Our insurance won't cover it? Oh, I wasn't clear on that. Well, we would be liable if somebody got hurt. Right. right That's why we have insurance. Road. Right. Our insurance would not cover that? I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to double check on it. But I, my understanding was that we wouldn't, the town's insurance wouldn't cover it because it was a school event. The school's event, oh, I they, would the other give, they would give us a waiver. So it's just, it's one of those stupid things we run into quite often. Um, I know. It's always something. Isn't it? What else did I have? Um, resident partner, we talked about that. Right. Oh. I saw on one of my little, I don't read all those emails that come in about Act 46 on that listserv, mm -hmm. but the Brattleboro Select Board did a resolution. I don't know if I they did. I did not see that one. When did that come in? I don't know if anybody pays any attention to those or not. But we could reword it, but do a similar resolution. I don't know whether we could get the school board to go in on it jointly. There's some I difference. wrote an email to the governor's office. Did you get a response? Nope. Not yet. I know they're really busy, right? Mm. Oh, yeah. They're doing not, busy detailing. I'm not expecting that they get back to me right away. So, can I, I see I, that? I'm sure they will, but. So, I don't know if you want me to draft a, put it together a draft, and maybe we can look at it at the next meeting. I'm pretty proud of the representatives there. They're, they're willing to stand their ground mm -hmm. and make this. State's going to step in, step in. We want to see you do it. Mm -hmm. That's what I think needs to happen. Um, I think there's, like I said, I've said over and over again, there are real constitutional issues because it involves property that's held in fee simple title mm -hmm. and you cannot take property um, from people. Remember, I forgot that. Without piece. compensation, and the state can't do that. And to put a state to come in and commandeer or allow a district to commandeer property. Our school was held in fee simple title by our town. Um, so. Remember, I, I got that deed where it Like I say, over my dead body, I will lay down in front of the police cars on that one. Well, I found, I've got that win. piece of paperwork that says that the property is the town's. That's right. I would support um, yeah. drafting a resolution, resolution like that. Absolutely. And, you know, just, I, um, I just feel like maybe the way our supervisory union is set up and maybe the, this is the way supervisory unions are set up in other parts of the state where we have our elementary schools that feed a middle and high school in a way we kind of have a shared governance yeah, it is. And, we, and they, they and tried to prove we've that we've been doing this since right. the 1970s mm -hmm. and so for us out of district and the way everything works is fine and it's been a thoroughly researched issue for years that, mm -hmm. you know, the board, um, the special board. Well, you and Greg were at the meeting. Yeah, we went, Greg yeah. and I went to the meeting Wednesday night. There was a lot of people speaking up. Yeah, there were many, uh, as you said, Callis was very well represented. Yeah. And, um, 20 representatives or something? 20 yeah. people from Callis. And, and, um, and, and 
and I would definitely support drafting a resolution like that because um, when that law was drafted, it said, you know, this the alternate governance, all, you know, and then the alternate, and we came up with the alternate, and yeah. we're doing what we're doing, and we shouldn't be just thrown out. You well, know, and then like I and, raised the point that. Um, the school belongs to the Calus taxpayers. The, the taxpayers are the ones that paid for that school. Right. Right. And, and we, we decided and, right. not to incur debt to pay our bills as we went. Mm -hmm. We had a sinking fund. It was a lot, a lot of conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's it's in the, in the town's prerogative to use whatever approach you want. Yeah. And mm -hmm. other towns chose to bond. Yeah. Well, we have bonded, like right. the right. addition and stuff. Right. But it pays system. all off. Right. And, Right, right now, it's debt free. We were yeah. responsible. Yeah. Right. And now the towns that I'm not gonna say, I had to do something different, yeah. we're going to have to help them pay off yeah. all that debt. Yeah. It's not but, fair. Uh, yeah. And as they mentioned at that meeting on Wednesday night, um, initially when this was sold to the residents of Vermont, they said it was, you know, to um, save money. And now they're not saying that it's no. To so save now money. they're changing it to something else. Yeah. 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 They're just and and to. For me to believe that a a board with a, a single board with a handful of representatives, rather than all those all the volunteer effort we get from all the boards from all the towns, right. is, there's only so much time in each volunteer's but, budget. Mm -hmm. And to those think guys that are when you reduce out. it to five people, they're gonna it's not gonna they're gonna quit their jobs and yeah. and they're gonna be more responsive to children's needs in these outlying towns. How, I, I don't see it happening. No, I don't either. And Michael Dwayne stood up and made a very good point at the beginning of the meeting, and he said, can you guarantee that you will not hire an associate director to the director, an associate director to the deputy of the director, and, and an, assistant, an, assistant, an assistant, assistant to the associate to the deputy? Because he knows because, how state government works. Yeah. Because eventually we'll just all become, you know, yeah. so unmanageable, it'll be very top heavy. Well, that well, they already said it's already top heavy. Somehow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, I definitely would support drafting a resolution because this is not okay in the world. Well, as I said, it's a travesty. It is. Were, were any of our representatives there, senators or? Janet Ansel, Janet Ansel there, there and Kim Jessup. Did they speak? Janet, answer, Janet answered a question that was presented. Um, and I don't think Kimberly spoke, did she? No, I don't no, know she, who she no. is. No, she didn't she speak. She's my pillar. Yeah, I talked to her afterwards. She's been really great. Yep. So, anywho, and that leads me to remind you that July 9th, we have the meeting with the school board. I think there's three things on the agenda. One to talk about the trash people, so I have to brush up on that. Um, Act 46 and the community engagement piece which I put that last because I can see the whole meeting being taken up with those other two items. And if we don't get to the third one, we'll talk about it later. Yep. These are the two most pressing issues right now. I have food ordered from um, East Callis store that I'll pick up at 5.30. Wow, great. And I have a nice little dinner. It's gonna be um, vegetarian pasta primavera, salad, cookies, that kind of stuff. So, uh -huh. under 100 bucks. Excellent. And I've I ordered love that it. store. Yeah, and I've ordered enough like so for Katie, Cat Fair, so we have enough for hopefully everybody. Yeah. Um, oh, one thing worth noting is that Susanna Culver was not at the meeting last. Was it Wednesday? Yeah. Last. She's busy. Oh, oh okay. Oops. No. Um, a couple of things I'd like to ask you guys. For you to give us a quick update on the, we, we need to do minutes this time. We didn't do them last time. Can you give it, you've heard about the horse issue? I call it Maple Corner area. I was corrected, it's not Maple Corner, so I don't know what area you call it. But it's over on that side it's of town. western edge of Cows. And it's um, a resident named Elizabeth Shedd, spelled with an S. And Wilson is going back and forth, back and forth. He's contacted the Ag Department. Um, I forget who the last, he just sent an email today with somebody else that he had contacted. Cliff's gone with him a couple of times to Elizabeth's house because I thought maybe it's another person, another body. She's been parking her wagon covered up with a blue tarp in the road. What wagon? 
some wagon she has. A horse wagon, you mean? Mm -hmm. That's it. So I'm going to ask Cliff to, give a, okay. Cliff to give an update. Here's the wagon and the horses. Yeah. She parks that. Oh, there it is. And there's the, the lighter colored horse is the one that's got this big gaping hole in its chest. I think you got a picture of that too, right? Yeah. Oh. Where it had that stick in it. So I'm actually thinking about We're calling. Well fed, the muscle. Yeah. Muscle. I'm thinking about calling the state veterinarian. Doesn't doesn't a isn't there a state veterinarian at the health department? Yes. I'm thinking about calling that. What do you think? But they only deal with uh, uh, like rabies and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, you've been called. I don't think you're going to get. But there's like nobody to take. There's just like nobody to take care of this. So there used to be some other laws in place that uh, we could have been in a position to do something about this. Um, as usual, in recent times, things have been thrown onto the backs of the towns from the state. And this is one of those cases. And the recourses that are available to us seem to be circular. Oh, well, you need to get law enforcement involved. And law enforcement says, well, you need to get your local animal control involved. Legally, the only recourse we would have would to create something called a pound keeper. This is straight from Jim. Right, but he recommended not to do that. And this is something we don't want to do. If we did it, um, the pound keeper would have the authorization after submitting the warning saying you need to address this situation. If you don't address it by this date, we will impound these animals. Because as animal control, Wilson can only really deal with cats and dogs. So the pound keeper can deal with other types of critters. Um, the pound keeper does the requisite letters and the warnings, and if nothing happens, they have the authority to impound animals. And then at that point, it just becomes who's got the deeper pockets. And, and, just, and, and, and where do you and where do you put the animal? And where, you, and where, you, and where do you put the animal when you impound it? And Jim said there's a limit to what the pound keeper can charge per mm -hmm. day. Exactly. Which is not. It's like two dollars. Yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. no one's going to set up a facility mm -hmm. for that purpose. purpose. And ultimately, it would end up before a judge, and a judge nine times out of ten plus is going to default and give the animals back to the person. So um, is the were, issue that we happen to see these horses and we somehow well, someone noticed that there's a horse with a wound? Wilson has gotten several complaints right. from neighbors about the horses running free in the area at nighttime on the roads, um, not Dangerous. under anyone's control. and. She insists that they're always under her control. Even when she's not with even them. Even when she's not with them. Mentally. Um, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. allows Absolutely. them to roam onto other people's property and they, you know, forage and graze and whatnot. Um, there's clear cut evidence of this. Uh, while we were there talking to her, she. She actually answered the door this time, huh? Yeah. So was that a barn or was that a house? That's a house at the very front of the property. So where you see the wagon, if you... What road is that, Cliff? Collar Hill. Okay. The Collar Hill from the Callis end or the Worcester end? Uh, this is from the Callis end. Okay, so... If you go down here, this is where you're going to intersect with Worcester Road. So she actually parks oh, the Oh, she's on Collar Hill? On the right. side yeah, of the Yeah, Dot's been getting horses. Yeah, the oh. first time we went there, the wagon was on the uh -huh. property, um, actually parked alongside this building over, over oh, here to this oh, side of it. Oh. Uh, then we went back, we came up the rise and we immediately noticed this. She insists that it's not in the road and it's clearly pretty is. clear here. Sure. Wilson let her know that, you know, you gotta go 18 feet from the center line mm -hmm. of the road and that's considered part of the road mm -hmm. regardless of whether it's graded or not. Right. But that's on the travel portion. And this and is that's clearly on the travel portion. And people have almost hit the horses in the, at night and stuff. Right, and there's no reflectors on this or anything, so it's a hazard for nighttime drivers as well. So she said she would move it. I'm pretty sure Wilson is going to do a drive-by in another day or so just to see if it's still there. Um, she, one of the complaints that uh, Wilson received was from uh, Dorothy Naylor, and uh, that they had clear 
uh, evidence that her horses had been grazing on their land. She initially said, well, yeah, I had them out there because, um, you know, they said it was okay for me. And Wilson said, okay, you have permission to be on the, on the nailer's land? And she said, yes. And he said, well, who's it from? Because you didn't get it from the nailers because I talked to them. And they're saying they never gave you the permission. So then she changed her story and said, no, I never had them there. If there's evidence of a horse being up there and grazing and horse poop flying around, it's not my horses. It's, it's really hard to show that there is clear-cut evidence of neglect or abuse. Well, except for the You've gaping You've got sore. this wound. Um, she, Wilson doesn't think she has a vet. He knows she eschews any kind of medical, be it animal or human. Um, at some point last year, she was thrown from one of the horses, broke her leg. She set the leg herself. Whoa. And she got a dealt with it and healed. And I didn't see her walk. Uh, but wow. um, it healed. She had neighbors helping her in the interim while she was healing. Um, so if she's treating this wound and she's going to be using whatever homeopathic natural treatments she's got she's allowed it to looks do. like mm -hmm. the wound is being cleaned mm -hmm. you know and abraded and whatnot mm -hmm. so um it's not like i mean the dog, I mean, it's not being dealt with at all right? yeah i mean the horse looks muscular enough i mean right well that's what wilson it's said it's being clear well that they're fed being, but they're being fed it's not emaciated yeah, yeah both of them look really nice yeah um, yeah, yeah. The, they're beautiful the horses. Coach. At one point, Elizabeth and I went by, and Elizabeth um, always looks at the, the hooves of a horse to yeah. see how well it's being cared for, because she's a self-trained They let her get attracted tra mm -hmm. to her? Um, they were right there by the road. You can walk over to them, and they'll come over and see you, because oh, they're hungry. Really? Mm -hmm. no, they're curious. Mm -hmm. They can see if you got and, goodies or anything. And they'll let you check their hooves? She was able to do a visual inspection from the side of the road. Oh, oh I see. Property, because they were right there. Just like you see here, mm -hmm. they're right there next to the road. So you can see their feet. At least the day we went by, they were in another area where there wasn't even any um, brush. brush or anything, foliage around them, so you could see their feet clearly. Uh, but yeah, you could, from my interactions with them, it seems like you could go over and pet them. And, Do they have water? They have water, but as you can see here in this picture, <laughs> like their bucket tipped was over. tipped over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is no electricity on the property to run the well. She starts the generator and gets so the electric point. fence. Is it a solar charger? The electric fence is solely on a solar charge. She won't run the generator unless she absolutely has to. Okay. She doesn't like the sound of it. Well, solar charge fences work pretty well. Yeah, if they've got a big enough capacitor for the amount of line you're running. Pardon me? If, they, if it's got a big enough capacity right. for right. the right. line you're running. Right, that's right. And you're maintaining it so you're not getting shorts from vegetation. Exactly. Yeah. Um, she's got about 11 acres. Um, she refuses to clear out any of the trees to create a pasture <coughs> for the area. You know, it just goes on and on. The bottom line is, is it really seems as if something bad is going to have to happen before anything changes. Mm -hmm. Well, those things will wind up right through someone's windshield. There's oh, that would be horrible. And that's a real danger. That's a really, I know, and that's what we're worried about. Wilson's is tactic that, is to keep trying to impress these kind of things. And she knows that she gets mad. And maybe, you know, break through at some point. But from what I've seen, it's going to be a really long time before that happens because, mm -hmm. you know, she immediately goes on the defense. It's everybody else's issue. She's always abiding by the law. She's cognizant enough that she can research the laws and know, mm -hmm. you know yeah. what, what's required. For How old a woman is she? That's hard to say. I would guess she's probably in her late 40s, early 50s. Okay. Has, did, has Wilson talked to her dad again, Carl? He hasn't talked to the father again, but... What's the woman's name? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Shedd. One with an S instead of a Z in Elizabeth. And two Ds oh, at the end. Two Ds at the end. Um, Not related to the East Calishans. Mm -hmm. Already asked. Wilson's feeling is is probably what's going to happen is the residents who are being impacted in the media area will band together and file a suit. Civil action. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah in Superior Court. Yeah. 
I yeah. think that's yeah to you know, show damages right. right. But yeah. you know, when they 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 found um, Wilson talked to the attorney at the ag department who said here have people fill out this form. So Judy filled it out, and I don't know if anybody mm -hmm. else filled it out, submitted it, and they get a, and Judy got a call from this woman at the ag department saying we don't. We don't do this. This is, you know, you can't use this form for, for this. And Wilson said, the attorney at AG sent him the link to the form. Mm -hmm. So you see where this is right. just yeah. Yeah. going around and around circles. Yep. Um, this Jamie Baum lives right across the street from the property and brought this point up with that she's tying her horses with bailing to the side of the road. And uh, they're literally standing on the road grazing the grass at the road edge. Um, yeah, and she's in that stock Packing traffic. traffic flow. Just a mess. So I just wanted to let you guys One of the times where they were seen running loose on the road, there was one that had a lead trailing behind it that clearly right. broke, it, broke it free up. Yeah, I mean. I, so I mean, just since so we wanted to let you guys know what's going on in case you get calls or hear about it or whatever, I want you to hear about it through the grapevine. Yeah, no, I appreciate being kept in the loop, but I mean, if that was me, I'd call the state police and... They won't do know. anything. Well, and but can't you they just like them. file a report so that they have it on record, they have it on record? Well, they get... I mean, it's they, a public they, they, safety they get the, threat. It is a public safety threat, and that was my thing because they're in the road. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a way to save these horses from getting killed. Yeah, yeah. Or some, or some yeah. resident having... An accident and I'm more worried about some person getting killed. Seriously yeah. hurt, yeah. Wilson you know? is diligently documenting everything, everything yeah. that he Paper can time. with any agency or be it his own. Mm -hmm. and every time we went to the property, he was taking pictures and making Good. notes. Good. Yeah, you know, and very detail oriented. Is if you know him, you know that yeah. fact about him right. because mm -hmm. he can tell if things have been moved or if yeah. something's new. Anything that's mm -hmm. changed, he picks up on it immediately. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And we've got and we've gotten we've notified Jim Barlow, mm -hmm. so that we make sure that we're doing yeah. everything right yeah. on our end. Yeah. So I think we're being responsible yeah. Yeah. about how we handle this. There's just yeah. not a lot of options. Yeah. The state kind of just like, oh well, mm -hmm. figure it out, take care yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. And this was also confirmed by the woman that I told you about that runs the rescue, that rescue organization that Elizabeth had a long talk with her and she said it's the same exact thing almost word for word is what Jim told us so mm -hmm. it's an unfortunate situation you really have to just get them to they really have to be willing to relinquish mm -hmm. and she's not going to do that mm -hmm. so the is other she, does she ride them yeah. yes she yeah. rides them she says one of them's fully trained and the other one she's training and um even if it's not on a lead, it's under her control, which is a contradiction because if the horse isn't trained, mm -hmm. then it's not voice trained. So you think she she tethers them near the road so she, they can graze on the mm -hmm. limited grass that's yeah. there? Yeah, that is what she's doing. Uh, so that's her approach mm -hmm. to roadside mowing. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Maybe we could take, no, I don't want the horses to eat <laughs> wild parsnip. <though. laughs> Get tum stomach aches. Well, they won't eat it. Oh. They'll graze around there. Yeah, that's right, roadside mowing, there you go. <laughs> Goats. No goats won't eat it either. Actually. No, they won't. Mm -hmm. So thanks for the update and thank you for going yeah. with Wilson. I was going to go with Wilson, but I had prior commitments. I couldn't. Um, can you? You went to a couple of CBRPC meeting things. Can you have any update you want to give well, us? CBRPC energy? at its last meeting had a public hearing on the energy element. That's the right terminology. It keeps shifting. But there's an energy aspect to the regional plan, the overarching plan. It's like a chapter that deals with energy. Mm -hmm. And there was an energy committee um, that developed language, proposed language. And you're on it, right? I, ex officio, was okay. on it. Um, I actually asked to be appointed, and they, there was no room on it. And I wound up attending, and they gave me the same level of participation. And, access to the committee and, and the committee process as someone who had been appointed. In fact, I, most, not most, many of the committee members that were appointed didn't show, and I showed for near everyone, so, but, um, and Jan showed up for a number of them, and 
other members. Stephanie Kaplan showed up for a couple of the earlier ones. Um, but in any event, we came up with recommended language. That language um, was presented to the full commission. The full commission discussed it, and we made some changes to it, um, minor changes. And then at the, at the last uh, monthly meeting, they noticed the plan amendment, the energy plan amendment for uh, uh, public hearing and no interested public showed up. There was a relatively new representative on the commission from Warren, who obviously very late in time raised objections to a number of the premises of the plan, energy plan, and um, but there were no changes made to those. They were based on her under or misunderstandings as to why how we arrived at the language and not to get into specifics, she was wrong on it. But um, the plan passed. Um, you need a I forget what the vote needs to be, but uh, no, it needs to be. It's a simple majority, and we had more than that. There was one abstention and one objection. The Warren rep objected. Mm -hmm. There were some people that were absent, and but even with the abstention and the absence those absent, the missing votes from those who were absent and the objection, we still have a majority vote. So really? Carried. So, are you, so you were happy with how this came, yeah, out, came out? Yeah, I'm really happy and it gives us a lot of power. Now does this have to be incorporated to into to, our town plan? Or no, so that, no, so that, so until and unless the town updates its plan to incorporate the authorities that the, the relatively new statute passed in 2016 allows us greater say in the siting of energy projects. Um, but we have to jump through a number of hoops. And but once, but we would need to um, update our plan to have that say at the local level. But until and unless we do that, we have some overarching say through the regional planning so it doesn't plan. so it does it like a default to the regional if we don't have our own well n no the re there's just a town plan right that's entered into the record but if the at a public utility commission hearing on a project energy mm -hmm. project and then there's the regional plan and then both the regional commission can present a position and can mm -hmm. participate at the public utility commission mm -hmm. hearings as can the towns if they're interested in participating. Um, one does not displace the other and one is not in lieu of the other. Um, okay. but so we can't just like defer to that. But, the, the, but, the, but the, the overarching regional plan provides us greater protection than we had before. So in other words, we need to update our town plan with regard that's to right. energy. And I that's think, right. I think Jan's on it. She is totally on it. And we have the regional uh, planning commission staff that they, they sent out a template a um, like a spreadsheet and they have these how they're um, providing their staffing resources to the various towns on different things we have a really Elgin. good we have a good reason and plan. they are boy you'd think that we were special um, they're uh, they're working for us they're we're going to be help assisting the region uh, the Callis Planning Commission and development of our energy plan. Oh, good. And I'm, just, I'm guessing that's already underway. To some they have got every one of their staff is doing something yeah. for Callis. They are really yeah. amazing. Yeah, they really I always are. feel like they are a really talented bunch and really committed. It's a, and you know, the executive director is wonderful. She really has her act together. Yeah. Yeah, I think things have gotten a lot better. She knows her stuff. Um, and Eric Vorwald, the guy who he was handle, handling the energy plan stuff. He is, has taken a job as the city planner for, or a city, as a city planner for the city of Winooski, oh. Vermont. <laughs> so he's out of here. Do um, they have somebody else hired? No, they'll, they'll be advertising. You know, they have a very small staff for all the work that they do. Yeah. Every one of those people that I have dealt with has been helpful beyond what I would have expected. Top-notch. They're really, really good. I don't know if there's, can we, I don't know if they have some kind of a thing where awards get given out to regional planning commission staffs or something like that, but in my book, they've earned it. Really happy with them. I mean, so, we had some issues in the beginning with Bonnie, we thought, 
But she's come over, she's coming a long way. Yeah. Yep. She's she's they, they um, the staff are very respectful and responsive to the to the towns that they understand that they serve the towns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they don't try to impose their own perspectives. At least this is my. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty new on the commission, so, but my, in my limited experience, that's what I'm, that's my sense of. I mean, we got Dan doing. They're really democratic. Yeah, it's Dan really great. Area. Dan's doing roads. Pam. Yeah. Pam DeAndre is doing that erosion stuff. The um, watershed thing. Yeah. And I'm on I mean, that committee. Yeah. And actually, I'm also, on they have a projects project review committee. I was on that years ago for Woodbury. It's a really important committee to be on. Good. So any major project that comes through either. That, that is kind of like the a regional and potential for regional impact, which is generally one that's we'll see Act 250 mm -hmm. um, hearings um, or permitting, and and or if it, it's a utility project, it would go through the Public Utility Commission yeah. rather than Act 250, and the, and this project review committee um, reviews those projects against the plan, and they had a I was just appointed, and they had a meeting put it. Hit the wrong thing on my calendar. I, I missed the first meeting. <laughs> I was really bummed. It was last week. Um, so oh, wow. anyway, so Ky somebody named Kyle, who has last name I can't remember. He's from Middlesex. Attorney. And is he an attorney? He's he now works at the Public Utility Commission. Right. He he was at the Act Forty Six meeting, right. he and he that. talked to me like he knew me, and I'm thinking, I don't know you. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's been at the Act Forty Six meetings. He's. He, when we f attended that meeting in Worcester a was couple he years there? ago, yeah, he was at the front table. He was oh. one of the uh, alternative committee members. Right, and he's not in favor, obviously, of that. He was great. He yeah. and Floor. Right. Um, but he came over and talked Floor to me. And I was, he was like, "Oh, how are you doing?" And I'm like, yeah, "He's great." <laughs> well, you were, you were, Madam Chair, you were very vocal at that meeting, if you recall. <laughs> yes. And uh, your your expressed. Positions were mirrored his, so I'm sure he oh, is that what remembers was? you from that. Yeah, he was. Because he told me where great. he because he told me where he worked, and I was like, he just took this job. He's brandy. I told him to look up. He's like general counsel to the commission. He's got a. I said, well, I hope job. it's better than it used to be. Working there, yeah, everyone loves it. Loves this new chair. Do they? Tony yeah. Reisman. Yeah. Oh, that's the one that Stephanie liked. Yeah, everyone likes him. Yeah. Really so, anyways, um, thank you for. Doing all that extra yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, um, I mean, we all end up doing awesome. extra I, stuff. I like that. So, thank you. I used to do it for Woodbury. Yeah. So, thanks. Um, last thing is some minutes. We have. Thanks for asking. I no, I've been. Gotten no, I wanted to. It is my job to report. I just forgot. Yeah. So. Katie, what minutes do we have? We have. Um, it's May 14th and June 11th. And I think I sent you a couple of changes, yeah. um, and you had caught some things as well. Rose, did you review the minutes? I uh, I didn't just look at this May 14th, I just looked at June 11th, and they were fine. Yeah. So, I would make a motion that we approve the May, what were they, 11th? 14th. May 14th, May 14th minutes, 14th. and June 14th minutes. June 11th. June 11th. Yeah. May 14th, June 11th, with the changes as noted. Second. All right, is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so don't forget, July 9th, Monday, come at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether Bill Kimball is joining us, but I did not invite him. And so it may not... It's just a local school board meeting, right? Or he shows up, does, at, he goes to all the local school board meetings. Well, uh, that, that's good. Um, I didn't invite him. To what meeting? Our meeting. Well, it's, it's a joint meeting. It's not our meeting. Right. It's well, their it's a meeting. meeting. I, he's, yeah. there, he's there. So if they, if they he's told their representative right. from U32. and If they invite him, that's fine. But I didn't invite him because it's not right. my thing right. to do. Right. 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 Be like us inviting maybe Jim Barlow or maybe that's not right. No, because so we would right. invite Jim Barlow. There's no, there's no higher no. authority. No. Lateral authority. So. Okay. Anything else? else to adjourn? Good. So be it. Excellent. Who's gonna, and who's going to second that motion that Rose presented? Me. Me. At oh, 9.55.